<clears throat> Hello, how's everybody doing? Welcome. Let's fix this real quick. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Classic Cast number 31, I believe it is. I believe it is Classic Cast number 31. And we are here with uh, Joanna, uh, Jonah, Furious Paul, whatever you want to call him, Vanilla Wow speed leveling legend himself, the world record holder for uh, actual retail Vanilla Wow speed leveling at four hours and 20 minutes. And uh, he's also well known for his guides. A lot of you guys have probably already looked at his guides, but if you haven't, you should definitely check them out. Joanna, it's good to have you, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And of course, guys, uh, we are here as usual with tips out, baby, with Stay Safe TV. And uh, let's go ahead and get it started. Joanna, how, how'd you get started with WoW? Like, when did you start playing WoW and um, what, what got you interested in it? Well, I've been a Blizzard fan my entire life. Like, ever since Warcraft 2, I love Warcraft 2. We had Warcraft 2 land parties, like, all the time. And then we switched over to Diablo 1, played Diablo 1 a lot. So that was very, very fun. And then Diablo, uh, yeah, Diablo 1 and Diablo 2. And then we played uh, Warcraft 3 a lot. Like, that was one of my favorite all-time games is Warcraft 3. Mm -hmm. So at that point, like, I was willing to play any Blizzard game that they came out with. I didn't care what genre, like, it, it would be. And... Uh, I so I never played an MMO and when WoW came out like I was willing to play I'm like this is world this is a Warcraft genre mm -hmm. I'm gonna play it and I started playing I'm like wow this is a new type of game I never even played before and like this is actually fun I'm like meeting people in the game and like doing quests and stuff I'm like this is awesome yeah and yeah. Uh, I just fell in love with the game and I just kept playing it there you go that's awesome and, and just to correct myself real quick i i misspoke and i said four hours 20 minutes i, I meant to say four days 20 hours so I, i'm very nervous I, i'm not used to streaming i don't do that very much so uh yeah it was a, it's a new experience for me but <laughs> well dude jo i mean joanne is famous so back in my day back in my day when i was a kid playing wow there were two famous people like back back, back in the vanilla wow days from my point of view there are two famous people it was joanna and there was Kungan. And everyone knew Kungan because he was like the best player on the entire planet. And then everyone knew Joanna because he was the best leveler. And his ads were on every single WoW-related <laughs> website. You couldn't yeah, go sure. anywhere and not see a Joanna advertisement. Yeah. 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 But, but back then, those were like the two famous people I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And like, uh, like I've talked about that before, too. Like, there really wasn't a whole lot of people. Like, now, I mean, you have streaming and this. And there's a lot more like... Uh, uh, people of like interest, I, I guess, you know, just because there's, there's more people around, there's more avenues for it. But um, I think it was it was back in the day, it was probably really hard to, to kind of stand out from the pack when there really wasn't that many avenues to do so. Um, so, yeah, definitely really, really cool to have you on here. Um, so you, you you said you played a bunch of Blizzard games, you, you played Diablo, Warcraft, all this stuff. And you kind of had a history as a speedrunner before WoW, right? Correct. Yeah, I've been speedrunning games since I was seven years old, starting off with Castlevania II, Simon's Quest. And then uh, I speedran uh, Doom 2, Quake 1, and then Super Castlevania 4 in 1997. Um, and then uh, I speedran StarCraft 2, Brutal Campaign, Wings of Liberty. And uh, what else did I do? There might be some other ones I missed on there. But yeah, I just love speedrunning. It's just all just awesome. I started playing WoW with not the intention of speedrunning though. I just wanted to play it just for fun. Actually, for the, like the first like full like year and a half or so, I did a you know just level sixty content raids. I did all that stuff for like the first year and a half. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as you know, as Blizzard started to, re to releasing brand new servers, and I would jump on them and start playing on them from one to sixty, and I realized how much fun that was for me. And I decided to actually take the time to actually research and how to do them faster, like do the next realm faster. I would actually just stop raiding, stop doing this, you know, the level 60 content and just spend all my focus on figuring out how to actually do the next realm really? even faster. So, so yeah, I mean, you, you basically just worked really hard at, at, at taking what you already had and then just kind of refining it down over and over and over again. Yep, pretty much. Yep, just over and over again, practice and research. I did a lot of research, like looked up on Thoughtbot, like all the quests in the game and just trying to see how I can incorporate them into the route. And because of that, like that actually made a really good leveling guide. Like most people who first used my guide back in the day, 
one of the main things they they said was, "Wow, I didn't know about this quest. I didn't know about this quest. All these quests here are like, like you know, people who first went through the game, and they didn't realize how many more quests there were to do, right. and they were all organized nicely into the route, and that's what made my guy like really really good." Right. So did you did you play a hunter from day one or was it just incidental that you ended up playing the class that was the fastest at leveling? <laughs> well, when I first started playing WoW, I, I played a warlock uh, for like the first whole year. Like I was okay, I got nice. two or I got yeah, I got two level sixty warlocks. I was actually first to sixty with uh with, with the second one I did. Mm. But that was a play time of ten days. <laughs> I did a play time of 10 days and I still was first to 60 on that realm just because everyone was just so new at the game. Right. And most people didn't even weren't even really into like speed leveling or anything. They're just like all casual players. Like every single wild player was like a casual player. Mm -hmm. Like even me at the time, I got first to 60 with 10 days play time just because I played 18 hours every single day. Yeah. yeah. It's funny you say that because I remember specifically there's this warrior on our server that got to level 60 in like nine days, like 15 hours played. And everyone thought he was like a god because that was like one of the fastest times on Shadow Song, like up until that point. And nowadays, obviously, like nine days is is whatever. But back in the day, like, like 15, 18, 20 days played to 60 was pretty much the norm for the most part. Yeah. At least, uh, yeah. Yeah, like for me, like I, like I've said it before, I've never I've never speed leveled. I've never really focused on speed leveling or anything. And I, I expect it to take me probably like nine or ten days played, and, and and I would be really happy with that. And that's like the strategy of beating my head against the wall and hoping for the best. <laughs> so, you know, I, paladins aren't the fastest levelers, but on top of that, like myself, like I've never really practiced that. Like I, I mostly do like PvP and like end game content. So, um, so yeah, I, I think it's just crazy to think how much has changed. And uh, also to kind of add on. You talked about how all the WoW players, were like as a player base, WoW was very, very casual. Um, that is also really funny. Like if you if you played other MMOs and stuff in the past, and just gaming in general, like everybody would call WoW the Care Bear game. So it's it's cool to see like how the game has developed over the years, and and people have found out that WoW is a game that you can play more hardcore. Vanilla WoW is a game that you can play more hardcore if you want to. Um, almost to the point where, where the attitude has changed and it has a reputation of being super difficult or super hardcore when the reality of it is that it's a game that's very casual friendly and you can really play the game any way that you do want to play the game. So, yeah, I think it's cool that you mentioned that too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Speaking of that, when when did you really like take a step back from WoW? Because I, I think you played all through TPC, right? But how, how far did you play? I played all the way through Miss of Pandaria. I actually made leveling okay. guides all the way to Miss of Pandaria. And I was going to play WAD, but there's two reasons why I didn't. One, I started to lose interest in the game just because of the way the game was headed. I didn't like how things were becoming linear. It wasn't becoming it, it wasn't as fun to like speed run or even put a guide together or even even using a guide for, for like modern WoW since everything was just all linear. You didn't even need a guide. And um, at that point, I couldn't get beta access to WAD because I was going to write a leveling guide for WAD, but simply because of the fact that I did not get beta access and also I was losing interest in it, I didn't even care at the time. Like, okay, it's time to move on and do something else with my life. And that was when I decided to be a full-time streamer on Twitch with the name Furious Paul, streaming retro Castlevania games full-time for like four years. Yeah. So did you did you ever at all think that you'd be going back to WoW? Actually, no. I thought that it was over. I thought that it, I was done. Like I did not think that Classic WoW would come back out, even though like the private server scene was going on, and I was kind of jealous that I wasn't in there. Mm -hmm. People were playing it, and I was just still just streaming Castlevania stuff full time. And I seen that people were playing on that. I'm like, wow, I kind of wish I was on there, but that was private server stuff. I don't want to do that. And yeah. then, then you know, and plus, you know, Jay Allen Brack said, "You think you do, you, you think you do, but you don't." And I'm like, "Oh man, they're never gonna come out with that." And then, like, and then they announced it in 2017. I'm like, "No, no way!" Like, yeah. my jaw dropped down to the floor. I'm like, "Oh right, it is time to play WoW again." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's crazy, man. Like, so many people think like it, it's almost like a it's like a chance to go and like relive the glory days, and especially for guys like you 
who th they actually had glory days, not like glory days being like, oh, I leveled to 60 and I died a lot in Molten Core, but like actually like you, you were somebody who was very well known in vanilla and, and kind of throughout the history of like early WoW in general. Um, I think I think it's definitely like really, really exciting to see that. And you can see that, I mean, even in your stream. So, so those of you guys who don't know, Joanna has been uh, rerunning his uh, old world record leveling VOD, or I say VOD, it was, it was a recording back then. Um, and he's been, he's been replaying it on his channel right now and he just kind of has it running and, uh, he, he comes in from time to time and he, and he talks to the chat too, just kind of giving commentary. So, uh, you guys should definitely go, uh, follow Joanna and check that out, uh, leading up to classic. And then once classic comes out, he's, uh, he's going to no be doing his, uh, his, his leveling route, his, his, the newest version of his leveling route. So how, how much have things changed from, uh, retail vanilla to, uh, classic wow and, and just what all have you learned and kind of broken down even more? How, how much faster of a time do you think you can get? Oh, well, yeah, the 2006 video that I recorded, I wrote the first ever leveling guide for World of Warcraft based on that video. Like, I even just watched the video back and wrote down step by step what I did. And that was the first leveling guide for a while. Since then, you know, it's been 12 years now, and I was actively updating my leveling guide nonstop, at least for vanilla until actually even through TBC, because TBC had a lot of the same stuff with 1 to 60 va vanilla. So, I was updating my one to 60 stuff even during TVC and okay. that stuff was constantly like new routes were being found mm -hmm. and uh, new strategies. And uh, even over the last year and a half, I've spent, you know, the full time work just updating my leveling guide and there was new death warps found everywhere, new uh, tips and tricks everywhere. I totally remastered my horde leveling guide and even finally made an Alliance leveling guide. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of new route changes and new strategies and stuff like that, like everywhere. Mm -hmm. So stay safe is kind of like stay safe is, is as far as our classic cast crew. He is like our leveling guy. Stay safe is, is always working on speed leveling and stuff as a warlock. So, so I know, I mean, he mentioned this earlier. Stay safe is, is maybe, maybe a little bit uh, extra excited to have you on. Uh, stay safe. Well, I, I know you got a lot I of got, questions. I gotta say, like, I feel bad even as far as speed goes, even being mentioned in the same sentence as Joanna, because I like I'm like fanboying pretty hard for Joanna, dude. Like I'm not even gonna lie, he Joanna like like he, like you said he was that was the first vanilla while leveling guide, right? And that's that was like the that was the gold standard for vanilla while leveling, mm -hmm. right? So that's really cool. But I, I guess like the most important question I gotta ask you is, how do you feel about this? And we brought this up the the dungeon grinding aspect sort of becoming the new speed leveling meta for classic wow is that something that back in the day you had envisioned did, did it even occur to you that dungeon grinding might be better than what you were than what you were doing or what are your thoughts on that in general uh well i i don't really know i mean from what people have told me during the beta that dungeon grinding is effective i feel like uh, with dungeon grinding, you're going to need to have or be in a really good guild, like a you know a guild people in your guild that's knowledgeable with with vanilla WoW, know how to do the dungeons, know how to go through them, and you know if you're in a good guild, then dungeon grinding can be very effective. But if you're in a guild with say a bunch of noobs that are new to classic WoW, <laughs> you're going to have a really tough time doing dungeons. Yeah, I mean yeah. they're I, still I, fun though. But like you might just have it, you know, you won't be as fast as say like a guild that's very knowledgeable that knows how to go through the dungeons. I think you're right. And I think like the biggest component that makes the dungeon grinding method a challenge is the human element, you know, because for a lot, let's say we're talking classical launch the first week or two weeks, and you're thinking about doing dungeon grinding. You have to have a group of five people that are all on the same sleep schedule. And if one person wants to stay up late or one person wants to go to bed early or you oversleep, you know, your, your group is thrown off. You're thrown out of sync, right? So that's, that's a big problem. Yeah, you need good organizational skills with the guild to, to, in order to execute dungeon grinding all the way through. Like, especially if you're going to be doing a speed run from 1 to 60. I mean, I like to see that. I like to see a dungeon grind 1 to 60 speed run and see what kind of times that people can get from that. But yeah, you're going to need good organizational skills, a good group of people, probably even more than five people, you know, like so that you'll have people that are sleeping that are, you know, the ones that are sleeping, the ones that are available to actually do the dungeons mm -hmm. that are playing the game and. Yeah, just good organizational guild skills in order to do dungeon grinding. Well, let yeah. me ask you guys this. I mean, who who do you think, and I guess we can ask also which class, but 
world first classic wow level 60 is this going to be a guy that's been or girl that's been blasting dungeons in a good guild dungeon grinding or is this going to be a solo or duo open world leveler what do you guys think <sighs> It's it's tough to say. Um, I will say that dungeon grinding, unfortunately, we haven't been able to test it across every single level range, especially because the the last beta ended at level forty. Um, I will say it's it's pretty insane. Like mm -hmm. RFC levels, like getting twenty twenty one thousand experience per hour at that level. That's like thirty five minute levels, and then you go into Wailing Caverns, and it's even more, and you're still getting like thirty five forty minute levels in the twenty. Um, and the consistency, you know, not having to really leave the dungeon unless you want to vendor or train skills. You're pretty much doing the same repetitive task over and over again, not having to adapt, just constantly doing the same thing, improving out of every run. It's pretty damn fast. Now, is it, you know, solo hunter fast? I don't know. We saw, you know, obviously Joanna pulls amazing times. We saw some hunters pull like one to 40 in like 39, 38 hours. Uh, I can't really say, but I do feel like dungeon leveling, if you're able to have that five-man group, especially when it comes to the pre-raid best-in-slot process and just gearing you up as you go and getting ready for Molten Core, I definitely think it's the way to go. But again, as Joanna said, you need that coordination. You need that five-stack. You need to wake up together, sleep together. Mm -hmm. Not not sleep to get, uh, not sleep together. Sleep at this at the same time yeah, yeah, yeah. Same no time. no i mean whatever whatever yeah. works right whatever works yeah sleep at yeah <laughs> exactly so um yeah you need to make sure that everything's coordinated but i think in terms of not just getting one to 60 but getting one to 60 and killing ragnaros i think the five man stacking is is pretty good but who knows yeah i i think um what i think is probably going to happen uh it, it's pretty well documented the hunters are are, are considered the fastest levelers as far as like questing and stuff like that goes um with dungeon grinding well first let's explain why why dungeon grinding has has recently become a thing in the beta so uh a lot of the stuff that people have found out about vanilla wow over the course of the last 15 ish years has been stuff that's been figured out on private servers and the reality of it is uh not everything that was on private servers was correct Right there, there's been different private server cores. Things have been refined. Wait, what? Things, yeah, believe it or not, guys. Believe it no. or not, <laughs> not everything was exactly right. So there's been different like uh, private server cores. There's been different things that have been figured out, researched, refined. A lot of guesswork. I mean, we we had Nano, who's the the quality assurance lead on the Nostalrius team, and Nostalrius kind of set the standard. That's that's when this whole thing really like the ball got rolling on like uh, official like not official but but. Uh, Blizz like is the term that's used. Uh, Blizz like private servers, Blizz like vanilla private servers. Nostalgius, Nostalgius really went and, and, and set the standard for that. And uh, he, he said it himself. He's like, you had some stuff that was data mined and, and some stuff that was just literally guesswork and researched off of, uh, off of like way back machine and looking at old thought bot comments and stuff like that. So um, to kind of get the, the, to go into the beta and to kind of get to test everything and, and really get to work everything out. A lot of people learned a lot of things, and the one thing that is uh, is a big deal is that elites, I think, were giving 200% XP, and, and I may be wrong on this, but elites were giving 200 XP, 200% XP on private servers, whereas they were actually supposed to be giving 300% XP. On top of that, uh, on private servers, elites were doing much more damage than mobs of that level, where uh, typically they would do about the same damage, they would just have a lot more health as an elite. Uh, at least by the end of Vanilla WoW, and people were misremembering how this worked, and private servers were kind of just guessing stuff out. You know what's funny? I think it's I think it's actually two fifty percent for two fifty. Okay, okay. You know what's so funny? That's such an easy fix to catch because there are so many old Vanilla WoW dungeon videos. It would yeah. have been such an easy thing to observe and then fix on a private server. But you know, there were like you know six or seven years of private servers that never caught it. Well, I mean, not to take too much credit away from them, I think. There's obviously, you know, vanilla wasn't static. It was not one giant monolith. It was patched out. There's a chance, I don't know if this is true or not, but there is a chance that some things, including experience values, were different in like patch 1.2 or 1.3 or 1.4 mm -hmm. versus patch 112. And I think that's a lot of the, the differences between private servers and classic WoW. It seems like a lot of that has to do with 112 specifically implementing a series of nerfs and stuff like that um to mobs and stuff so that could definitely be a possibility but i don't want to take away too many too much credit from private server developers they did do a lot of research for sure uh real quick i, I think i think joanna might have dc'd joanna are you still with us 
He's leveling, dude. Working on the guide. Joanna just hit 60 in classic. <laughs> wow. My right. God, this guy's fast. <laughs> <laughs> He's already level 60. Yeah, uh, I mean, ho hopefully we'll get him back here soon, but but we can kind of keep going on that. Uh, but but essentially, yeah, that's that's what's happened. So, so it's 250, not 300, my mistake. Um, but you've kind of taken the bar and you, you've increased, you, you've made it less difficult and increased the reward. So naturally, uh, dungeon grinding has become more of a thing than, than what people had expected in the past. Uh, now, something else to consider, something else to consider in the beta was the fact that we got to level 30 and everybody was stacked. I mean, it was a totally different meta and everybody, there it is. Uh, here, let's see, let me, let me go ahead and see if we can get this working for a three man in the meantime. Three uh, man sleep together. Yeah, that's there just how it goes. Um, here, let's do this. Let's get, um, let's see if we can figure this out real quick. Just in the meantime. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can just go like this for now until, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's fine. It is what it is until until Joanna can come back. So his, his internet just went out. But um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Just to continue. So you've increased the reward. You've reduced the difficulty. And in the beta, people were like totally stacked at level thirty. And uh, essentially, what's happened is that uh, you started and they added the beta to level forty. So. It might have been a little bit easier than we expected to be come classic launch because you have like full bis at level 30. But whenever they re-released the beta last week, we had templated characters and our stats were absolutely terrible. So um so <laughs> sorry, you guys in chat, I swear you guys make me laugh all the time. No, uh, I mean yeah, you're, sorry, you're absolutely right. I've I, I have actually not done on the beta personally a lot of dungeon grinding testing, but I have seen I've watched a lot of other people's bots where they've been testing it. With various comps and what i've seen you know they've been testing rfc and dead mines and and uh, all, all these dungeons there's a lot of wiping that goes on and it's because they're they're not as stacked as people were when the beta cap was increased from 30 to 40 and everyone had ng grenades and they had enchants and they had full level 30 best in slot and they had all this stuff and and, and potions and consumes so uh yeah it'll be interesting to see how much struggling is going on if people are trying to push these dungeon grinding routes um we'll we'll have to see i don't know mm -hmm. yeah no i agree 100 percent. like not having engineering in oldamon like when we were running oldamon for like pendulum of, of doom drops towards the end of the like you'd pull a million packs you'd rotate your you know iron grenades or whatever thorium grenades whatever you wanted to do and you would just clear trash so freaking fast doing it again on this most recent stress test much much more difficult like no, no grenades, no interrupts, no rotations, and obviously like no freaking four ravagers in a group, just meat grinding everything down. Yeah, that was another thing. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, if you do do dungeon grinding, like let's say you have like a melee cleave group or something like that, um, I think that uh, I think that you're going to end up having a situation where you you are going to end up getting really good gear. So that's I, I think that's probably nothing to worry about at that point but i do think early on uh kind of the efficiency of speed leveling quickly is going to be the biggest concern yeah i, I mean whenever joanna gets back i'd love to hear his thoughts on on his thoughts on open world duo leveling you know are are there certain comps where he thinks it would be better to duo than just to be a solo for example you know maybe a lot of people say hunter druid or warlock priest or warrior paladin these sort of like iconic duos mm -hmm. I, I would wonder what his thoughts are on that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You, you know what I want to know? Mm -hmm. I want to know if he has any secret strategies to get out of the starting zone very fast. Because well, at the end of the day, all these servers that we've been practicing on, at the end of the day, come classic launch, there's going to be thousands of people in the starting zone. All these guides that we see, you know, maybe a lot of the information just isn't as relevant because you're competing for certain, you know, mobs and quests and stuff like that. I want to see what he has to say about starting day launch day day one how he plans to get out of the starting zone as fast as possible well one thing that i would definitely recommend like, and he's probably already thought thought about this but uh with with layering and stuff what he could do is he could try and get an invite to the classic cast layer because right now i mean he's he's on a completely different layer than we are and uh we're, we're hoping that he gets an invite back to our layer so if somebody could help him out with that that would be great but uh unfortunately uh he, he's not in our layer right now but um I, I do think I do think layer hopping is one thing that is uh, is certainly something that you could take advantage of. 
uh, early on, but uh, well, dude, it's, I, I, I think it's kind of inconsistent. Very. I gotta say, like, I've played on the last two stress tests. I'm sure almost everyone here has. I played on mm -hmm. stress test server 15, two stress tests ago. That was the biggest, biggest stress test server there was. I feel like if you just have a route, like you know, okay, I go here and then I go there and then I go here and I leave my starting zone at four and then I go here. If you have a, like a pre thought out route one to 10 or one to 15, the launch day is not an issue for you. Like you, mm -hmm. you just, just by having that bait, even if it's not a perfect route, even if on practice, you know, if you're playing on a private server practicing, or if you're playing on the betas, you know, on, on the dead beta servers where you're just like, okay, one to 10, one to 10, one to 10. All right, nice. I got a two Oh five. I got a one, a one fifty three. you know, like trying to shave off minutes here. If you just have a route, like if, if really, if you have a one to 10 time, that's like two twenty probably, mm -hmm. it's not going to be a problem for you. Like you're going to get out. It's going to be okay. And then by the time you're 20, um, if you keep at that pace, really, you're in a re like, you have to think there are so many noobs mm -hmm. and they're just like gamer bobbing around. Like these are the people that stand in lines waiting for, like you saw the photos on Reddit where they stand in line waiting to kill Grick near the cold and the gnome starting area. Like it's like a 30 minute line to kill one monster. Like don't be that guy. Just go do literally anything else. Have a route, know where to go. You're fine, dude. Like the starting zones, <laughs> If if you're an above average gamer and you you've put any amount of preparation into this at all, you're going to be just fine. That that's my take on it. He, here's the thing though, I totally agree with everything you just said, but don't you kind of want to be that guy? Like if it's like if it's your classic launch, right? Especially if you've never played a private server before, and maybe you've never even played vanilla before. Like when I see those people online, dude, I'm low key jealous, man. I'm like, I wish, I wish I could do that. I wish I didn't have to worry about stream sniping, so I could do that, man. I wish I could just take it all in. Didn't even have to level. Just literally RP walk in the starting zone, watching everybody else play. That's like, because you know it's never gonna come back again. You know this is the last time Classic is gonna launch. You know it's like you want to make the most of it. Yeah, I think uh, I, I've been pretty. I'm pretty vocal about this. I think people should play the game how they want to play the game. And for me personally, whenever I level, whenever I level to 60, my my goal is to try and do everything I can and have the most fun. I run around and I do PvP. Uh, I, I do I, I do quests. I do dungeons. I, I group up with people. I do, troll the bridge in Iron Forge. Like I, I do everything. It takes me forever to hit 60, but. That's because of two reasons. One, I'm incredibly ADD, and also I uh, I like to have a lot of fun with it, right? And I think everybody should play the game the way the way that they would like to play the game. Um, however, yeah, I mean, I think everybody's in a different situation. They have different goals they want to accomplish. Some people are trying to go to molten core as quickly as possible. Some people are streaming, and 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 they they're worried about getting camped or something like that in PvP. Um, I do think if you're leveling in dungeons, you're not going to have to worry about like getting camped in PvP and stuff as much. But um, I, I think that it's just natural that people are like, oh, you know, who's leveling? I mean, and we we, we talk about it, right? And we've, we've talked to a whole bunch of people. Everybody's, oh, what are you doing for leveling? What are you doing for leveling? Um, I kind of agree. Like, I mean, that's, that's uh, it, it's going to be a new challenge for me. It's going to be a new way to play the game because it's not something that I had done in the past. But um, that's true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you got to play the game how you have the most fun. I mm -hmm. will say, that being said, I will say, like, the benefit of trying to level quickly and having a route, you know, Joanna has a great route. There's a plug for Joanna's website. He actually has a very good route for both Horde and Alliance. He's spent a lot of time on the beta, lost four or five months working on Alliance and Horde routes. Uh, hopefully he'll layer back with us. Yeah. But um, the benefit of, of leveling fast is, okay, so you get out of the starting zones early. Now you're level 15. You're out of the Zerg. You're no longer competing with other players for quest mobs. So now you're 15 to 20 super fast. You're, you're pretty much alone. Okay, now you're in the 20 zones. You're alone or with other fast levelers. Being ahead of the Zerg, like you're already leveling fast and then it snowballs because you have no competition. So, okay, you're alone in the 20 to 30 zones. Okay, you're alone mm -hmm. 30 to 40. You're almost alone 40, uh, you know, 50 to whatever, right? So, the, like going fast actually, in a weird way, going, this is really five head, going fast makes you go faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> believe, believe it or not. The, well, and it's it's just like cutting cutting those little corners like that and if you are trying to go for speed, um, do it, it, those little things add up. Right. And that's that's something that I have a big problem with. I, I waste a lot of time. And I, I it's also it's one of those things where I I like to and I, and I know a lot of people like this. You try and be super efficient all the time, but you spend so much time trying to be efficient 
in the actual, let's say, dungeon or doing the quest that you end up taking more time overall because you're spending a bunch of time preparing, right? I was like, oh, if I, if I have better gear and I do more damage, then I can do the quest faster. That's, that's like, so I, I'm going to go do that, but by the time I go and, like, go to the auction house, go buy a weapon, go do this, go do that. Let me go back and train. Let me, it's like, it actually slows you down at the end of the day. And uh, you end up kind of, like, over, over tweaking and over analyzing kind of what you're doing is, uh, is a big issue that I have. But that's what's fun for me. So I do a lot yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 sorry, go on, Tips. Well, I would say, you know, just off of the back of that, I would say one of the best ways... To, to just, you know, to really easily save time is to you know, look at your class and see when you want to go back to the train. Like, I think, you know, if you get if you get uh, new skills every two levels, 60, I think it's like either 30 or 31 trips to the trainer. If you cut that down to like seven or eight, you've already saved yourself like two hours in leveling. Um, something, not two hours, but something something like that. You know, you have to spend five, ten minutes going out of your way back to the trainer, and then you got to spend the gold to buy the skills that you didn't need to spend, which means you got to spend more time farming that gold back up to get your mount, stuff like that. So if you just find, you know, like a, just a quick little tip, if you find a way to um, reduce the amount of times you have to go back to the trainer, that's like a nice little way to shave off a couple of hours. No, you're right. I mean, there are very inconvenient, inconvenient spots to level and then train. So let's say I'm a warlock in Desolus, and I don't have a Warlock trainer in, in Kalimdor, and I have to go back to Eastern Kingdoms to train my Warlock skills. If I'm in Desolus from 33 to 35, am I going to go back to Ironforge at 34, train, and then come back to Desolus and get to 35? No. Like, you just keep blasting, right? So you're right. Being smart about when you train your skills is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so just to clarify, uh, we don't have any word from Joanna yet. I tried sending him a DM on Twitter. Uh, oh no, he literally just responded. Uh, his power went out. So uh, hopefully his power will be back on soon. Uh, if it's not, that's fine. That's not power. Yeah, that's not power. That's not that power. That is not power. So, uh, <laughs> so it's his power went out and, uh, and, and uh, basically he's, he's trying to get it back on. We'll see what happens. His stream went offline too. Uh, just one more quick shout out to Joanna's stream if you guys uh, want to go take a look at that. He's been running his 2006 uh, speed leveling record. Uh, recording, not not VOD, but a recording because they didn't have VODs back then. Um, so if you guys want to do that, he's been running that leading up to Classic launch, and uh, it'll so, it's, it's been pretty interesting. To watch, he's been there giving commentary and whatnot too. He's so. in chat. There he is. Oh yeah, I, I, says, I just yo, got my your, power went out. I just got your DM. So uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as you can get it back on, uh, uh, it's it's totally fine, dude. No worries. Yeah, I, I wish he was here to talk about this because this is, I think, it was a great discussion. And if he comes back, we can pivot back onto this. But let's talk about like world first, level sixty. So which class? And we talked about dungeon versus open world. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a hunter? Is it going to be a mage? Is it going to be you know a druid? Is it going to be a warlock? What do you guys think right now? Yeah, we we started on this and didn't really expand on it too much. Um, I, I don't think it would be crazy. I, I don't think it would be crazy for it to be a mage. Uh, kind of given the the situation with speed leveling and stuff like this, um, like we've heard from a few guys, like you know different different strategies and whatnot. I think the the fastest sixty on uh, some of the most recent private servers that have opened up, ma mages have been up there. Hunters are always and up mage. there. Yeah, hunters are always up there, but but mage is is kind of uh, it's kind of come to the forefront recently. I think. Well, dude, you, so what oh, I've sorry. heard is that mage is that mage open world AOE grinding that is not as efficient on classic wow because of leeway and because of just the way mobs interact with you so mm -hmm. but when i say mage i'm not thinking open world aoe grinding like we've seen people do on private servers i'm thinking like mage spell cleave because i know there are a lot of guilds mm -hmm. going for world first ragnaros or whatever they're doing four mages one priest you know yeah. and i think those guys are gonna blast like i, I really think that they're gonna <laughs> shoot up there man yeah i mean you can do that much damage the more damage you do the less mana you use the less mana you use the less downtime you have uh, the biggest concern would be basically not overpulling, I guess, with that many mages in a, in a spell cleave dungeon group. Because uh, if you overpull, then you'll wipe. And, and pulling a little bit less when it comes to speed, pulling a little bit less and making sure that you're alive and and you can just do the, the next pull is way better than, uh, than than risking dying. Right. So you're kind of trying to find oh, like man. that happy medium. Like if you yeah. die, like it's it's your XP per hour every time you die, it just tanks. <laughs> I, I was watching a VOD. I'm not going to say who it was. It, it, it was a group that was practicing. Uh, I think they were level 15 or 16 trying to farm uh, Ragefire Chasm in, in Orgrimmar. It was a horde group. And every time they would wipe, 
you have to run back from Razor Hill. And it's like, good God, mm. is this is this worth it? Oh my God, this is so slow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even even something like Scarlet Monastery, like Scarlet Monastery is a pretty close graveyard. Like that's considered one of the close graveyards. Like you die in the dungeon and it's it's, a, it's considered a short walk, but even that amount of time, you get in, you rebuff, you drink, do all this stuff, it, it adds up. Like and it can make a pretty big impact. So um, yeah. so yeah, for sure. I think yeah. uh, I think starting out spell cleave and uh, later on in vanilla, early vanilla, it's it's a I would say it's a little bit harder to AOE grind as a mage. But whenever you have your full kit, because mages get pretty much their full kit by the time they're level 40. Like, it's not entirely, but it's it's pretty close, right? Different classes have, like, different, like, power spikes at different levels. I, I don't think it'd be crazy to see mages go in there and, and then be able to AoE grind in the world pretty freely if they're if they're far ahead from a lot of other people, like, uh, in, in the Plague Lands and other places like that. So From what I understand, the big problem with AoE grinding right now in Classic versus Private Server is threefold. The first thing is the respawn timers aren't static. And that apparently how it is, I'm not entirely sure, but from what I heard, you kill a mob, it has a five to seven and a half minute spawn window or something like that. So it's not necessarily going to respawn right at the five minute mark, which means if you're pulling like a pack of, let's say 10 mobs, maybe only six of them or four of them are up by the time you want to do your next pull. And the second thing, and I noticed this, like this is, I'm sure you guys noticed this too. Um, have you noticed like the mob pathing? Not not the pathing, the mob patrol. Like, have you ever noticed the mob just randomly sprint out of nowhere? Yep. Yeah. Like, like I don't I don't even know what you call that, but basically, like, they're not just like naturally walking around, you know, in their typical patrol. Like, out of nowhere, a mob will just freaking go full spur and just like run. Well, dude, I, I gotta tell you. So I had done a lot of leveling practice on private servers, you know, between uh, like, but be before we ever got our hands in the classic alpha like back mm -hmm. down we were in california the three of us and we sat down and i was doing a one to ten run i was sitting next to s fawn down in california and i was in frost main hold i was like level seven and a troll just runs like like i've never seen it patrol before it just runs out of nowhere and i die and i'm like okay oh, yeah, like, yeah yeah i was pissed dude it like, was okay this was is great <laughs> yeah that was uh yeah that was so funny so yeah, like mobs are way more mobile if you've never played the classic alpha or beta or um, you know the stress test. If you've only played private servers in the last seven or eight years, whatever it might be, mobs are so mobile. They move. You have you really have to mm -hmm. be looking over your shoulder because they just like tips is right. They just come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Striker has a really interesting comment. I haven't heard this yet, but he's saying the reason that happens is because they have rules to be in certain places at specific times. And if they if they fall short of that, they sprint to that location. Really interesting. I had no idea. That's the first time I heard that that reasoning for it. But whatever it is, it's super annoying, especially for mages that rely on mobs being up at you know particular times. And like you said, on top of that, the melee leeway is another the big thing. Mobs being able to hit them from further range makes it more risky. On top of that, the way Blizzard uh, applies its slow proc, it's not instantaneous like it is on private servers. I think there's either some spell batching there, or it takes like a full tick of Blizzard before the uh, the frost effect kicks in. So the mobs get more distance onto you and a lot of mobs get out of the blizzard AOE before you know they get hit by the blizzard and it's it, it creates a lot of problems. So mm -hmm. I, I think specifically with mage AOE farming, I think you might see it in certain level ranges in certain areas, but I don't think it's gonna be like the consistent thing that people just do from like level 30 to 60 on private servers. I think it's gonna be much more niche. But mm -hmm. spell cleave, on the other hand, like you were talking about, like the four mages. Like, dude, I've seen some mages freaking power through dungeons, and the way I've seen it is two of them spec arcane, two of them spec frost, and they just, you know, they they just they literally arcane explode all over mobs. It's actually, mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, I, I think it's gonna be really really interesting. Uh, give me just one second. I, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. Um, you guys can just continue on. Um. Yeah, um, I, I've I've heard that there are several guilds looking for World First Ragnaros. You know, they're what they're doing. It's it's super tryhard, right? But they're having a roster of twenty five mages, and they're gonna spell cleave the way up to sixty, go Ragnaros, and then you know twenty of the twenty five mages are gonna reroll to their normal class that they normally play. But they're only they're only doing the mage spell cleave because they they're they're going all in with the spell cleave because I think it's so powerful and so fast. They'll reroll once they go Ragnaros and play the normal classes from then on out. So, hey, dude, mage, the spell cleave dream is real, I think. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy, though. Like, rolling a class specifically for world first. Now, will it be worth it? Like, 
I don't know how you feel about this, Stacey. Do you feel like World First Rag and Classic is like really prestigious? And everybody in the chat right now, I'm curious to what you guys think. Do you guys think World First Rag and Classic carries a lot of weight? Are you interested in seeing the World First Guild do it? What do you think, Stacey? I think, okay. I don't really think it has a ton of prestige, but I think it would garner a ton of viewership. Like on Twitch, imagine imagine you're streaming that, right? You you would have in your title World First Ragnaros or World First Molten Core. Like I think it would get a lot of viewers. So if you're a guild that's looking to promote yourself, right? I think it's a great way to do that. Yeah, true. And and then there's all sorts of discussions that have afterwards. How did we do it? It's a video series, etc. So as far as like the content you get out of it. I think it'd be worth it if you're a guild looking to put yourself up there. Personally, I think speedruns have a lot more value. Like, I, I think speedruns are better for the vanilla WoW or, or classic WoW competitive scene than world first stuff. Because, I mean, like, if if there's any world first in classic WoW that matters, or the one that has the most value is probably Ragnaros. Because let's say BW comes out. it's It's down within an hour, right? AQ40 comes out. It's down within an hour, 90 minutes. You know, Nax is out. It's cleared within an hour, two hours. Like, this is stuff. It's just like whoever gets there first. And then you, and then you have the debate, okay, NA lockout is before EU lockout. NA will probably, if it works with the lockout thing, because this stuff is just going to be so easy to roll through, you know, NA might just get all the, you know, all the world, like you might have NA Nefarian world first, NA yeah. Cthulhu world first, NA, just, just because we get it a day yeah. earlier. Dude, I don't so, know, man. Something else to add on to it, like a lot of people say, like you know, rag world first or whatever, is not really going to be that big of a deal. But the reality of it is, like you said, all the one percent, all the top one percent guilds, are probably going to go and clear it the first day of the reset. Rag, on the other hand, you you're leveling to sixty, you're organizing a guild, you're getting everybody together, you're getting people the quintessences, the pre raid. I think rag is is way more exciting than anything else just because it's going to be so much longer. Like, Absolutely. That is going to be a minimum yeah. six-day race, whereas everything else, it's like the first two hours. Yep. You yeah, know? that's true. Now, there there is also one other boss that I would say is probably the most competitive boss kill in all of Classic WoW, and I would say it's a car 5. I'm not even memeing. I think it's probably a car 5 priest because this is a boss that comes out in Phase 4, and I don't think anyone's going to be able mm. to kill Hakkar Five Priest during Phase Four. I mean, you had people in in Tier Three. You had people in Tier Three that have been farming Axe. I mean, Ian has a Costas's Guild, uh, Elitist Jerks. They they couldn't kill it by the end of Vanilla WoW, and they were in some crazy gear. Mm -hmm. So, give, given more time, they might have been able to. But I I think probably Hakkar Five Priest is the most difficult and competitive boss in Classic WoW. Um, and I don't think he'll die day one of Phase Four. I think I don't even know if he'll die Phase Four. Yeah, that's, 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 that's gonna be that's gonna be a really interesting one. But, that's gonna be a really really interesting. Uh, you might be right, but I think the typical player doesn't recognize the difference between like how many bosses are up, what have you, when you you attempt a car, and how much more difficult it is. And for the typical player, uh, they probably look at it and it's like, oh, Hakar dead, and and that's all. That that's it. They don't really think about anything else, right? Because there's really no other. There, there's no additional rewards other than like a pride thing. Uh, I, I think if people talk about it, people come to understand what it means. Um, and the thing is, like, I I don't know, man. Like, I, I think a car five priest will probably be a fight that's that good guilds use to differentiate uh, to differentiate themselves from bad or medium guilds. I think it's going to be like, like, OK, we did this. We're better than you. Like that sort of deal. Right. You know? I mean, it's impressive. The, it's, it's certainly impressive. And to those asking in the chat, what is a car five priest? Basically, the priest bosses, you know, in ZG. Um, if you leave them up, Hakar gains additional buffs, I believe. So, if all the priests are up, he gets a lot of different buffs and gets a lot of different, you know, stronger, basically. Um, so, yeah, being able to kill him with all those bosses up, that's that's what he's referring he, he to. Gets, he gets very strong buffs per priest that's left alive and 50,000 HP more per priest that's alive. So, it's pretty crazy hakar five priest has like 75 or 80 percent of the hp of regnaros which is a 40 man raid right so hakar five priest is a pretty crazy thing obviously there's no extra loot or reward to it well it was never killed during class oh, during vanilla wow so who knows what if there's some easter egg thing that happens when you do kill him during vanilla wow who knows man 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be in my mind, that's like, okay, who can do this or, or who, who's capable of doing this? Mm -hmm. Ima imagine he drops like a secret legendary no one knew about. <laughs> that'd be crazy. Yeah, that'd be wild. That'd be wild. In my mind, it, it's really funny. Uh, in my mind, Hakar Five Priest is like the first hard mode boss. And this is this is something there's, there's actually a video of Ian has a Kostas on his shaman Gurkthog fighting this boss the last day of vanilla wow before patch 2.0 they're like okay vanilla Wow's over he's in the guild elitist jerks one of the best guilds in the world okay let's go try to do hakar five priest they wipe on two percent they almost kill him mm. and that was like the first hard mode boss the first raid that ian has a costas uh this is when he first starts working for blizzard he's a raid designer he goes in and helps design old war which is the first raid or the only raid that has hard modes mm -hmm. so i i wonder if he took that a car like okay there's a hard mode boss sort of difficulty you can opt into let's see how this plays out in old war i don't i, th I think it's a cool idea yeah i think yeah. i think that's a i think that's a really good point actually you're probably right like because uh, we've gotten a chance to talk to ian haskus before and 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 you know he he definitely like recalled on a lot of his personal experiences in like vanilla and burning crusade and stuff to um he, he, he called on a lot of that stuff in terms of like the decisions he made early on certainly and uh i'm sure some of that still comes into play now but uh, yeah, that's actually a really good point. I think you're probably right. Remember when he said he might consider uh, putting Cthulhu in pre nerf? He was like, "We we might yeah, consider putting in Cthulhu in pre nerf." It would be it would be a funny yeah. It would be a funny like uh, April Fool's Day thing. Actually, I don't think they would do it, but it would be a pretty funny in game April Fool's joke if all of a well, sudden they put in Cthulhu pre nerf on April Fool's Day and they didn't tell anybody. I, I forget actually which one of us asked him, you know, could, could do you think, in hindsight, could you have killed Cthulhu pre-nerf? Mm -hmm. Because he was one of the people in the, in those guilds that was progressing on Cthulhu pre-nerf. And he said, back then, with our skill set and how many hours we were playing, probably not. But if, if we were playing the game, like Method or Limit plays the game, where they're, they're doing split runs in preparation, and they have the perfect raid comp, and they're getting world buffs and all of this stuff, mm -hmm. they're min-maxing to that level. Yeah, I think guilds probably could have killed Cthulhu pre-nerf, so... Maybe he will do. It. I, I don't know. It, it 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 would be interesting, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. It'd be so fun to watch, honestly. And like, it would be a nice like homage to the past, but at the same time, kind of honoring the present and the skill set of the players today. I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. Put it in pre nerf, you know, for a week or two. If people like are slamming their heads against their keyboards, not able to kill it, you can always nerf it. But putting it in pre nerf, I think, would be really special, at least worth it. So speaking of pre nerf. I don't know if we talked about this on Classicast before, but I've been kind of on this for a little bit, and I've, I've been, uh, I've been kind of complaining about this a lot. But something else that I'm con that I'm that I'm worried about as far as pre-nerf goes is essentially classic. It, classic is going to be easier than vanilla was, and I don't think it's solely because of. Uh, I don't think it's solely because of. Uh, we're better gamers now and people have more experience and retail is harder so they're more well practiced and this and that i do think all those things are true but something that really concerns me is you're essentially going to be getting the 1.12 version of whatever phase content you're in so phase one is patch 1.2 you're going to be getting the phase six the patch 1.12 version of patch 1.2 meaning everything's post nerf you have all the best items uh you have all the newest talents you have all the class balance changes put in and uh 16 debuff slots something else and i don't think one or two of those things alone uh is a big deal but i do think that having a situation where all these things are in together it kind of compounds on each other and it and it ends up being a kind of a mess as far as difficulty. I, I think it might be way too easy. And 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 this doesn't really change for the, the 1% of the typical, like the 1% of the player base, sorry. Uh, but for the typical raider, the average person going in there and, and attempting to raid and do all this, I think it drastically changes. I, I could be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, but I, I'm worried that it's going to be way too easy for the typical player as opposed to uh, the, the moderate or, or whatever level of difficulty it was before. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying they should change mechanics or anything like that. But what I am saying is, I'm just concerned about uh, that sp how how that specific situation is going to play out for the average I player. I, I don't want them to have like I, I don't want the average player to have a bad 
raiding experience or they they feel unfulfilled whenever they go into the raid because the one percent doesn't care the one percent is like whatever easy we're gonna we're gonna kill it day one whatever but for everybody else the the majority of players the the greater majority of players excuse me uh i think i i think that's an issue i it mean i i I think if anybody here expects, uh, you know, to be wiping on Ragnaros for four months, you got to get that thought out of your head. Um, it's just not going to happen. We know right. so much more about the game now. You know, we actually have stable internet connections. Like you said, as fan, just forget about all that stuff. The game itself, because they're using patch 112 core, it's going to be easier, more debuff slots, etc. So especially the first few raids, I mean, I guess you could say all the way until Nax, because Nax, I believe, is the only raid that, you know, I guess by that point, it would have caught up to the patch to, to a certain extent. Nax was 111, but you know what I mean? In the sense that, you know, by Nax, you did have 16 debuffs. Um, all the itemization changes, most of them were pretty much done by that time. So Nax is probably the only raid in Classic that we'll get that's of comparable or identical difficulty to how it was back in the day. Right. But, hey, but yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to go 180. I think that we... The three of us and also most people in chat i think that for so long we have been in our private server slash you know classic wow twitch chat youtube discord sphere for so long that we've been in this like above average classic wow gamer echo chamber most people Maybe. playing classic wow are going to be total noobs even playing on private servers back in the day you had molten core progression guilds that wiped on Gar for weeks, that were yeah. progressing on Ragnaros for weeks, even on private servers. And, and the people playing on private servers are the biggest vanilla WoW nerds that you can imagine. So, considering how accessible, considering how accessible that Glasgow is going to be, you just like you're gonna have so many like you're gonna have so many people that have never played the content before and that are noobs and that aren't mm -hmm. very good players that are gonna come in and try to do this. Seriously, I think over half of guilds. That are or over half of players that are going to be playing Classic WoW are going to be in Molten Core progression guilds. Ooh. Most guilds are probably going to fall apart in BWL. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. Like that, and 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 if you disagree, go do an LFR raid in BFA right now and see how terrible to see how bad these people are. <laughs> that's well, that's well, my take. My thing is, and, and I might look. I might be shouting Y2K over here. Okay, I, I might be shouting Y2K, and I and I totally understand that. I I, I totally. I acknowledge that. I know that that might be what's going on, but uh, it's just something I think to consider, and something that I'm that I'm a little bit concerned about. Um, and it's it's hard to say because we we really don't know, right? Uh, we we really don't know how it's going to pan out because we haven't seen any raid testing. So yeah, that's real true. real boomer. Yeah, shouting Y two K. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's the thing that I'm 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 concerned about kind of going forward. But but I think I think you're right. Like we kind of, I think most of the people who are, are like looking at a lot of WoW content, classic WoW content, they're they're watching Twitch streams all the time. They're discussing this stuff. Like this is the the above average player. You're probably right. Um, that's true. I, I definitely think there will be an adjustment period uh, in terms of like people, even great BFA players today. They might not be used to, you know, certain threat mechanics. They're not used to pulling threat on bosses, mm -hmm. watching KTM. Uh, they might not be used to, you know, just accidentally breaking a polymorph on a trash mob. I haven't, I haven't played BFA since lunch, so I don't know how the raid mechanics are. But, like, you know, accidentally breaking CCs in the suppression room over and over again. You know, killing the whelps when you're not supposed to kill the whelps because you're padding meters. All of these kind of more modern WoW habits that players have, they're definitely going to have to slowly unwind them because mm -hmm. those are what's going to hurt players in the long term you don't just pop cooldowns and and go on veil right away you right. wait you know get, let the tanks get threat a little bit before you go ham so i think there will definitely be an adjustment period mm -hmm. but, but i i just don't think that adjustment period will be very long i don't think it'll be four months on rag or anything like that yeah i i think certainly yeah, yeah. I, I i mean and it wasn't that way uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect it to be that way anyway if, if they had it tuned, quote, properly. Um, but I do think Classic mechanically, and not mechanically, but but uh, on paper, Classic is going to be easier. And, and I, I, I don't like to talk about the intangible things, right? Like we, we mentioned better internet and this and that. I don't like to factor that in because I think that kind of skews, that skews the information a little bit. And I think that when you're making design decisions – you can't really factor that stuff in. I, I think you have to look at everything on paper. But yeah. we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it plans out and uh, how it goes. 
I um, I mean, like you said, like the the three four months of progression in MC. I mean, that's that's gonna be a long time, and I I don't know. I I think. I think something else to look at is how you have the Molten Core item update. In some ways, okay, so, so this is something else to talk about. In some ways, some raids might end up being dip, more difficult on the start. For example, BWL launch is phase three. The Molten Core item update where they add in all like the, the really good Molten Core items isn't going to come in phase two, whereas in the past you had gotten those items in 1.5 because how they're working the phases is basically they're, they're clustering two patches together. So they're going from 1.1 to 1.12, you know, phase one is 1.2, phase two is 1.4, phase three is 1.6, BWL patch and Darkman Fair, uh, and, and so on. So if it's 1.5 and 1.6 together in phase three, that means all those items that are really good that people farm up in MC before starting BWL is not going to be there prior to BWL being out. And since a boss like Velasraz is such a gear check, I think in some ways, like uh, there's increased difficulty in that respect, but the overall, I, I don't know how the overall equation is going to pan out. And that's. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally saying. agree. And I think we can all agree on this. Classic WoW is the most mechanically challenging game perhaps <laughs> ever made. I think that Lucifron probably has more mechanics and abilities involved in that fight than perhaps all of Mythic Eternal Palace. Definitely. I think we're all on the same page on that one. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that goes without saying. Uh, I mean, I couldn't imagine any any game or even physical activity in real life uh, being more challenging than than vanilla WoW. So, true. yeah, we actually that, that second one <laughs> that that second one actually might kind of be true if you're uh if you're beating <laughs> your head against the wall. Leveling. <laughs> well, you know what? That's a good segue into a topic. So Joanne is not mm -hmm. here, but I heard him say this on his stream last week. So let's talk about this. We were talking about world first, level sixty, whatever class it's going to be. He's not even going for old first level 60. He just wants to have a better personal record because mm -hmm. he knows, and this is definitely true, there's two parts of world first level 60 classic WoW. You have to have a very good route and level very fast, and you have to not sleep, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I don't think he's... It sounded like this, um, and if he comes back, I hope we can talk about it with him personally. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he's not willing to do, like, a 40-hour gaming session where other people are. And that that's really differentiates it. So I think for him, you know, going for a new personal record or personal best, that's totally fine. I think the people that will be getting World for Civil 60, these are people, and it's two part, right? You need to you need to play for a long period of time and also be able to play for a long period of time and not have your performance suffer. Personally, at around the 24 hour mark, and we all saw this a couple of days ago on my mm -hmm. stream, around that mark. I get really stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like the brain just trying to start to shut off. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that, and that's what differentiates someone like me, who might be like a 9.9 .9 out of 10 player versus a, a solid 10.0 player who's mm -hmm. going to be world for still 60. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I, I think that like the the like mental it, it, there's like a big like mental uh, hurdle. I think that you have to that you have to overcome whenever you're doing something like that. I mean, it's with anything, right? Um, you know, some people don't care to play that way. Some, some people really enjoy playing that way. This will be my first time. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. I, I kind of just start like, I think everybody, when they get tired, they get like kind of loopy and like just things that are just not funny end up being hilarious. And, uh, I, like I said, I, I know I'm certainly that way. This is going to be something totally new to me is, is trying to just like beat my head against the wall until, uh, until I hit 60. Cause like, I mean, it, it, for me, like leveling to 60 in a month, that is good. Uh, I, the last time I leveled to 60, I literally got to 59. This is on a private server. I got to 59 and I started running dungeons at 55. So I got like six piece valor and uh, I, I got I, I got good gear, good good weapons, all this stuff. And You're I went a paladin, and, dude. You can't wear valor. No, dude, it's the paladin. Why set. are you wearing that, dude? Rep prio, dude. Rep prio. <laughs> so I had six piece valor at level 59 as a paladin. And I just PvP'd for a week. I just one whole week. I was level fifty nine, and I was like, "Hey, like I mean, I'm I'm, I'm good with this." I, and I enjoyed that, like essentially fifty nine twinking before I even hit sixty. And that's what was fun for me. So uh, I think a lot of people play the game differently, and this will be a new experience for me. And um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm pretty excited. I'm uh, kind of anxious actually a little bit, but it's gonna be good. So, dude, less than eight days, dude. Literally. Seven days, 23 hours, and 33 minutes. There it is. Yeah. 
Yeah. Less than eight days away. So it's uh, it's it's going to be really, really good. It's going to be really exciting. And uh, it, I mean, finally, I mean, you think about like when, when this whole thing started or I mean, even even after when the whole thing started, but more so whenever the classic announcement happened, how much has changed and how much ha has developed and, and gone on. And you, you've had excitement. You've had uh, anger. You've had drama left and right. There's always been something going on. And uh, I think once we finally have the game, everything is going to be laid to rest. I, I think it's it's just going to be relieving to actually finally have the game. Um, it's going to be good, man. It's going to be really, really fun. I mean, think about where we were a year and a half ago, right? We were the, we had legitimate worries about them adding transmog and achievements and mm -hmm. Dungeon Fighter to Classic WoW. And now, I mean, like, you know, there, there are some <laughs> things that are concerning, but, you know, <clears throat> layering. But, um, like, things are pretty good like i do you guys feel optimistic about classic wow oh yeah dude like what, what you just said right there like com like think about how bad classic could have gone it, it could have gotten really bad like they could have really really messed it up they could have completely caved to the modern wow community in many ways and just accommodated every quality of life change they could have cut corners and we, here we are a year and a half later they're tweeting about like they're repeatedly tweeting about how they do want to remove layering before phase two they're only putting in because it's a necessary evil they want to remove it as soon as possible we've got interviews and stuff coming out like this it, honestly like just thinking about how bad it could have gone like could it be better always but it, it's pretty much in the upper echelon i think of how it could have gone i think they've done a pretty goddamn good job mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's I think it's going to be pretty exciting. And I mean, people are always going to have their gripes. And I, I know I'm certainly I, I'm one of those people. I'm, I'm pretty reasonable. But at the same time, like I, I, I sometimes get my like I said, my, my Y2K mode. And uh, I start looking at like this, like the, the sky is falling. It's the end of the world. And, and, and I think at the end of the day, uh, no, it's not going to be the same experience that, that we had back in Vanilla WoW. It's not going to be the same experience that we had on private servers. It is going to be a new experience, and it's going to be really, really, it's going to be really fun for a whole lot of people. And uh, I've told this story before, but whenever I came back to to vanilla and I started playing on private servers in 2017, uh, I like this was on that level 59 character I was talking about. I I did that because I was like, I'm not going to play this game for more than maybe a month or two. Like I, I'm going to play a little bit. I did not want to level at all. I, I didn't. I was just like, man, I, I don't even know if I have it in me. I was I was working on my teaching certificate. I wanted to be a teacher. I was going to be a football coach. That's that's what I was planning on doing. And uh, I, I knew a lot about Rep Paladin. So then I start making some videos to kind of stay in practice with video. Well, I was going to say, that's why you're so good at explaining the nuance and intricacy of Judgment and Seal of the Crusader. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's about it. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, no. So I'm, I'm uh, that's, that's like what I wanted to do. And then I, I, literally got re-addicted to the game. I, I, I wasn't expecting that. I had more fun playing Vanilla WoW in 2017 than I remember having in 2004, 5, and 6. And I, and I genuinely mean that. Like, it's uh, whenever you're older, you have a little bit more control over your life. You you can figure things out better. You're, you're always constantly learning. Things are changing. And uh, no changes, no changes. Things, <laughs> things, are, things are different now than they were back then. So I think getting to play the game again with a, a being in a different situation in my life made for the game to be a even more enjoyable experience that I have back in the day. And I think a lot of other people are going to see the same thing. Absolutely. And as you get older in general, you can appreciate stuff more. Like, I don't know if you, have you guys ever taken like a family trip when you were kids or gone to a museum or something like that, you see something really, really unique and historical and cool, like some old ass painting that was like made by like Da Vinci or, Michelangelo over Stay Safe TV. And you look at the painting and you're like, dude, this is freaking stupid. This is really, really boring. Um, but mm -hmm. then like- No one's ever forward. said that about my <laughs> art, ever. <laughs> but then like 20 years later, you go back and you're like, wow, this is actually really intricate. Like, freaking look at the Mona Lisa, dude. She's she's smiling and she's not smiling. That's some, that's some pretty cool <laughs> shit. You know? Wow. Like, yeah, wow, you know, like you're really, really impressed. But like memes aside, like in general, like, I remember the you know the first time I went to this there's this place in California it's right by Malibu. I remember my parents took us there when we were really young and didn't care at all. We just had fun on the beach whatever. Like I go there now and it's like oh my god this is like gorgeous the view is like mm -hmm. amazing. Never could appreciate it. I feel the same way about Vanilla Wow. I feel like back in the day it was fun, you had fun whatever. It was like a nice first experience, but going back looking at all the design decisions that went into this game, 
just how deep this game is like from an MMORPG game design perspective, seeing like all the unique little items, the trinkets, how they set up progression, how they did the PVP system, the class balancing, the class design. You look at all of that now as an adult and you're like, holy shit, some big brains worked on this game. And it's awesome that we get to experience it at this level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be really, really good, man. I, I really do. Uh, so just to, just to clarify again, because some people have been asking, some people have, uh, are coming into the stream more recently. Uh, Joanna's power went out. There was a big storm, and, and you can see his, his stream went offline too, because he was he was he was doing class cast with us, and he's been streaming his his vod of his uh, of his speed clear or speed speed leveling from uh, from 2006. Um, so unfortunately, there was there was a big outage for the big power outage for him, and he's trying to get back on. If he can get back on, he'll he'll join us again. But if not. Uh, we'd we'd absolutely love to have Joanne on uh, again sometime soon. So, um, but yeah, we're 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 gonna keep continuing on and and uh, uh, keep talking about leveling and and everything else that we wanted to talk about today. So, um, so yeah, just to kind of keep going with that. Um, what well, are let's your... let's sort of like put perspective into sorry let's let's put perspective on what speed leveling means. So okay. back in the day. Joanna's world record for vanilla wasp speed leveling was four days, 20 hours, like you mentioned earlier, right? Um, this is like private server census information. Av on private servers, average player levels 1 to 60 in between 12 and 13 days, 12, 13 days, I believe. So, I mean, all things considered, if you have a seven days or even eight, dude, if, if, you're, if you're sub 10, you are doing very well. But... You know, for most people here in chat, because you're like in the vanilla scene, in the classic scene, you're a, you're a classic brain. Everyone here is probably, oh, 10 days, that's really slow. Eight days, nine days, that's really slow. You know, <laughs> people that are going for, for speed leveling, they're looking at five days, six days, probably sub six. But, uh, dude, average, average player, and this is on private service, 12, 13 days. That's, to me, that seems really, really slow. So Joanna did it four times faster than that, mm -hmm. right? Or sorry, uh, NA math three three times faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fast. So he is really fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's really impressive. And and back then too, right? Like now, a lot of people have gotten their their times down and stuff on private servers now. When you have basically infinite ways of oh, let's reset here, let's do this here, let's do that there, and you get to add this on in there, like. On, on top of the fact that you don't even know what all is 100% accurate on private servers or not is uh, is a totally different thing. And it really wasn't until the beta until you got something that was, ow, that was real, uh, that was real, so to speak. But um, but yeah, so uh, I do think it's going to be something really cool. What, for you guys, what are your guys' specific plans for, for leveling to 60? I know Stay Safe, for those of you guys who've been watching Stay Safe stream, he's just been like a uh, vanilla brain, like meticulously been trying to grind out his his leveling route because you for you, you think a better option for you is probably going to be questing, right? I think I'm going to be open world leveling. I'm going to be duoing with a priest. Um, I think 1 to 20, I think the priest will slow me down. 20 plus, I'm hoping the priest at least stays the same as solo or maybe even speeds me up a little bit. Now, here's the benefit of the priest, the pocket healer. Priest, Warlock is very, very, I play Warlock, so very mm -hmm. good synergy, very high uptime. Also, you know, I, I'm going to be streaming. People are going to be watching. I'm probably, at certain points, will be a target for ganking or world PvP. Mm -hmm. Priest, Warlock is daunting. Like, Priest, Warlock is a good world mm -hmm. PvP combo, so there's a lot of survivability that I get from having a priest with me. Um, mm -hmm. What about you guys? Um... Well, I will say uh, I'll second the priest warlock thing. Good PvP combo, dude. If I ran into them in the open world, I'd just uninstall my game right then and there. Um, but uh, but I'm doing a five man leveling group. Um, shout out to all my leveling buddies, Zulace, Ebon Flow, who you guys might know from his YouTube videos, um, DQT and K9. Uh, thank you guys for dealing with my totalitarianism for this uh, five-man leveling group. We're going to go 40 hours per session. Then we're going to do six hours sleep, then 24, six, 24, six, 24, six till we... 40 uh, hours. You want to go 40 hours at once. For, 40 hours, dude. We're going to do it, man. Okay. Whatever it takes. Got to bust you, out that tip sugar, you, you know what I'm saying? I, I got to say, have you have you ever like played that much? Have, have you have you tested your sleep schedule? You're testing your routes. Have you tested your sleep schedule? Yeah, so... We, so the longest I've ever streamed for was around like 36 or 37 hours. I did this once, like, 
I think it was during BFA when BFA launched around that time. So um, I've definitely stayed up longer than that, but I guess technically we haven't hit the 40 hour mark officially, but I'm hoping with some tips out sugar, I'm hoping with some stream hype, classic wow launch, all that good stuff. And um, something else that, that we might hear more about tomorrow. I'm hoping that that environment kind of helps us stay awake. Wait, what are we hearing tomorrow? Wait, what do you mean? I don't know. I don't know what we're hearing tomorrow. There's we'll news see. Tomorrow. Okay. There, mm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So um, for me, so, so you're looking at more of a melee cleave is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Three warriors, okay. one shaman, and a druid melee cleave. Okay. Um, so for me, I, uh, I'm not 100% sure on what I want to do yet. Uh, I'm trying to pull off some kind of crazy stuff um, to, to, to see if it's even possible. But uh, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out who a leveling duo would be for me for the early levels and then kind of meeting up and, and getting a group together. And the, the good thing about a paladin is that I can either go melee cleave or spell cleave on the horde side, which is pretty cool. Um, or sorry, on the, side, on the alliance side, excuse me, as opposed <laughs> to the horde side is what I meant, uh, as opposed to the horde side where um, there's no paladins. Right. Uh Shaman, I don't know if Shaman is is good for spell cleave on Horde side. Uh, I, I'm 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 not I'm not sure. I don't know if if you know better than I do tips, but I, I know for a paladin, I can go either melee cleave or spell cleave. In a spell cleave, I could tank and go consecration and and basically get a bunch of mages and stuff. Um, with a melee cleave, I could just be I could just be part of the group as normal, right? Um, now the the adaptability of a paladin leads me to, to kind of think that maybe I don't need one specific set leveling group and I can kind of draw from people in the guild or whatnot, people people who are around in the community and be like, okay, like let's get a group together, let's go here. Let's get a group together, let's go here. Uh, I do think it's ideal to have a set group and go all the way through, but I, I also like the, the ability to be adaptable because I do think it's really hard to coordinate uh, five different people, getting them all in the same exact schedule on the same cycle, they go to the bathroom at the same time, they sleep at the same time. I think it's going to be difficult, but um, I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure on exactly what I want to do yet, so I, I could either go... Uh, I, I'm leaning towards Spell Cleave. That's kind of what I practiced on the on the beta for level 40 to 45, that, that level range. But um, I think I could I do think both. we should... I think you should open up Joanna's Twitter right now. Holy mm -hmm. crap, dude. Uh... Hold on, let's see. Um, Monka freaking W, Furious, dude. Furious Paul on Twitter. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so I just found out a tornado came through my area only a quarter mile away. Uh, I'm so ripped houses to pieces. I'm so lucky to even be alive right now. Uh, yeah, holy crap. So, uh, a tornado just came through, uh, where Joanna lives, apparently. And, uh, let's see, is that showing up on stream right now? I know this is totally scuffed because I wasn't planning it like this. But, uh, yeah, so... Dude, the patch... Holy crap. Point, dude, the patch 111 weather effects for Classic WoW are actually crazy. <laughs> oh my god, what was the patch called? Like, something Storms, right? Storms of Azeroth. Yeah. That's, yeah, oh yeah you want to talk about storms? I mean, hopefully, ho I mean, hopefully everything you know stays okay with with Joanna, and uh, I mean, hopefully, hopefully, no no friends or family or any of his were harmed either. So, uh, we'll, like, we really hope for the best for Joanna, and uh, really like hearts in the chat for him, man. Like, like, no, for real, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he posted a photo. Sounds like everything's fine, but yeah, dude, yeah, that's scary. On his end, on his end, everything's fine, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I would uh, I would expect the power to be out for a little bit if a tornado just went through uh, his his town. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I will. I doubt we'll see him come back today. So we just got to go without him. It looks like, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. can, can one of the mods link uh, Joanna's Twitter in the chat? Let's see if we can spam those spam those hearts on Joanna's Twitter. I think uh, he'll. Like yeah. So and 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 big big thanks for him. I mean, he didn't even tell us there was a storm going on. So like. I mean, he, he just kind of he just kind of came on and uh, was like, yeah, like of course, like I'd love to come on Classic Cast and all this. So, um, so yeah, I mean, well, hopefully, hopefully he gets everything dude. sorted for Classic launch, dude. 
Dude, this is true gamer fashion. Okay, I just found out a tornado came through a quarter mile from my house. Like, he's just in his room playing games, talking about classic WoW tornado, like a quarter There's mile a away here. from him. Has no idea. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, hopefully everything gets sorted out for classic launch and stuff like that too. But no, that's absolutely right. Like, I uh, I think we all are kind of uh, we're all kind of guilty of that, just kind of being in our own world sometime just uh in our own our own world of warcraft so um yeah hopefully uh ho hopefully hopefully everything's gonna be all good there hopefully you can get his stuff sorted out for classic launch um but yeah um kind of continue on where where were we sorry uh like you're talking about your spell cleave crew. Oh, 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 that's right so uh a few different ways of kind of looking at how I, I might do a dungeon leveling group is uh I, I'm mostly leaning towards spell cleave, and I think we could go uh, two paladins, like a prop paladin, holy paladin, uh, two mages, and a warlock, or prop paladin, holy paladin, three mages, or uh, prop paladin, healing priest, three mages. The, the three mages are like two mages and a warlock is kind of inter interchangeable, uh, and then also like priest and priest and paladin. I think as far as healers go, is uh, is kind of interchangeable. Priest has some benefits in that if let's say let's say we have three mages and a priest, I can run around and I can pull the mobs. I can get power word shield. I, I wait for until the the debuff is uh, I forgot the name of the debuff, but there's a 15 second debuff where where you can't uh, get shielded again. I can wait for that to almost run out. I pull, and then whenever I pull, I um, I can't get dazed if I have a shield on. So do that, and then you can power word shield me again, and then we can soul. That's right. So. Um, so yeah, I can go, I can do that and get two shields in and then run back. We have a group, all that. Um, I'm, I run Retribution Aura so that whenever I get hit, I'll generate a little bit of threat in between the two shields. Um, so that's that's one way of doing it. Another way is having the Warlock, if there, if we have two mages and a Warlock, the Warlock can can pet pull, run around, da -da 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 -da, grab everything, and then he could sack his pet as it's about to die or whatever. They all come back. I heal the Warlock. If I heal the warlock, I can generate some threat from the mobs because he has he's basically just next on the threat table because he pulled with a pet, but he, he doesn't really have any threat. Uh, and then I get added to the threat table over him with a heal. They come to me, I consecrate, and then and then I have a pack that we can AoE down. Um, that, that's another way we looked at doing it. If we have a paladin healer with a prop paladin, then we have two bops, right? We have two bops, which is really nice. We have two blessings, so we can run uh, like salvation and kings maybe or like uh for me i can run sanctuary and wisdom or sanctuary and kings there, there's a bunch of different options that we can go with i guess um whenever we have that or or i can get blessing of light on myself which is once you get blessing of light that's a huge huge boost uh to plus healing for for healing paladins so i think that would be really good especially because there's such a low amount of plus healing gear in the game early on i'm i'm gonna say something and you guys can agree or disagree I am unhappy that dungeon leveling has turned out to be so powerful because I think it's not fun. I don't think it takes as much skill as leveling routes. I I wish it wasn't as viable. Honestly, like I'm salty about it. I agree. You agree? Okay. I agree. I agree 100%. I, it sucks, man. And uh, it sucks that, you know, a lot of people feel pressure to do it, myself included. Um you know, it's going to take a lot out of the world. I mean, imagine hitting level 32, 33, not doing STV. And you're just, you're stuck in SM, grinding it over and over and over again, because that's the most efficient thing to do. And here's the thing, just to clarify, you don't have to play that way, right? You don't have to play that way, but I do think it takes away from, I think it's cooler to have like a, a really well-refined leveling route. You're doing your quest, you're doing this. It takes way more skill. Like it takes way more planning, I should say. It takes it takes way more preparation, um, and skill. I mean, there's skill involved in that too. Like, to me, I think being able to focus on something for so many hours is a skill, right? And I say that because I'm so bad at it. But maybe for other people, it's easy, and they have perfect, perfect, 100% concentration at all times. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think dungeon leveling being so good certainly takes away from like the uh, i guess the prestige of, of being a fast leveler or whatever but um or i should say like the the efficiency of dungeon leveling but um like i, I think it just kind of is what it is at this point so yeah i i would say i mostly agree with you um i, I mostly agree with you with uh, about that it's kind of 
it does take away with from from that yeah yeah and, and all that being said i think that probably i think that probably world first ragnaros is going to go to whichever guild has the most effective and efficient dungeon cleave groups they get there fast uh, those guilds are stacking 25 mages cleaving their way up killing ragnaros they're having their entire raid roster not their entire you know half the raid roster re-roll to different classes to their normal classes after they kill ragnaros with their with their mage cleave team so mm -hmm. yeah i mean th like it this is not anything new. It's it's the best players doing whatever it takes to be the most successful. I mean, you see this in BFA. You see people that you see guilds that have, you know, on, on Gahoon, right? I think you had guilds that had like six warlocks or something. Like you know, class stacking. It, what it, class stacking mm -hmm. is not not the most fun thing, but mm -hmm. uh, it's good players doing whatever it takes to be the best, right? Yeah. What was it like? 20, 20 druids on Nefarian in tier eleven. Blackwing just taking advantage of the snapshotting. It was Paragon. They didn't get banned for it, but Blizzard banned Insidia the previous tier. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I don't really know too much, too much about that, just because I, I had kind of been on a WoW for a lot of years, like during that period of time with like, from like Cataclysm on, really Wrath on. But uh, it, it does seem to be that class stacking is something that's really, really, uh, not not only viable, but in some ways uh, or in some cases, it's it's actually most optimal to class stack in, in retail WoW. Th this wasn't always i mean this this wasn't always uh or sorry sorry this this wasn't something that never happened in vanilla wow either though like we've seen people go in there with like 20 warriors or something some crazy number of warriors and just stacking that like it, deep into bwl or whatever for speed runs like once once they get a bunch of their gear and stuff in too uh now that was on private servers again so so we'll see how that pans out whenever it's real but um i i don't think i don't think class stacking is is 100 percent not a thing in vanilla wow either Oh no, you're right. Like as far as speed runs go, it definitely was like melee stacking early on, and like mage stacking and next. Yeah, dude, mm -hmm. you're totally right. You're totally right. Um, I'm just salty about about the dungeon grinding leveling aspect. Like it's just, you know, this is this is personal preference. I just think it's so not fun. I just don't want to do it, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it can be fun. Like when you have, the nice thing about it is you got your homies on disc, um, and you know, at the end of the day, it's five dudes just having a good time. Um, yeah, just dude now. Just dude now, dude. Mm -hmm. Staying uh, awake together, sleeping together. Well, well dude, time. I I think I think that in a lot of ways, like a, a lot of people are saying, like, oh man, the, like how's this going to affect the streams, right? I, I think there's still going to be fun stuff going on on the streams and and stuff like that. But I think it essentially turns your, like, it's essentially going to turn the 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 streams where you're dungeon leveling and stuff into almost almost like a radio show, right? Where where you're talking to other people, you're pulling other people in a voice and stuff like that, and. I think it's still going to be fun. It's just going to be uh, different than than running around leveling out in the world. So that's that's just something, um, that's just something to consider, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Basically. I I think as far as as stream content goes, I think the dungeon grinding is going to be a lot less relatable to the average viewer than open world leveling because most people watching the classic West streams are not going to have a dedicated dungeon leveling team. So I think that mm -hmm. people will probably want. I don't know. I don't know from a viewer preference where the what they'll want to watch more: dungeon versus open world. Open world, they might be able to copy your route or talk to you about your route. Most people probably will not be able to be in a twenty-four hour dungeon grinding team. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Listen, you warlocks are speaking from a position of privilege. Okay, not all of us can solo level in peace. Okay, some of us need to be carried through dungeons over and over again. It's just how it goes. All right, as fan. Yeah, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. I think I think paladins are typically slower levelers too. Uh, so any, any sort of like paladins synergize with a lot of classes really well. For example, like like paladin warriors, like an S tier duo. Um, but but on their own, they uh, they they don't do too too well. I, I would say so. They they just synergize with other classes really well. And even honestly, even two paladins synergize fairly well together. But it's it's just how it is. Like every, everybody's different. Every class is different. You know, I see this in chat. Someone brings up a good, good point or good question, and I, I don't really have much faith in this. But we don't really know how easy the forty plus, so I guess like forty five plus dungeon art. Like, just because you can cleave stockades or whatever, does not mean you can cleave BRD. And I, I, I think you probably can. I don't think they're going to be that much harder. I don't think it's going to be that sharp of a of a incline in difficulty. But uh, I mean, the point stands no one has tested this content in classic right that is that is true do i think it's going to be crazy hard i don't think so dude mm -hmm. fair point fair point yeah um 
pretty soon, guys, we'll we'll go to a, a little bit of Q and A. If you guys want to go ahead and tweet at us uh, at Tips Out Baby at Stay Safe Warlock at S Fan TV, go ahead and tag it with hashtag Classicast, and I'll, I'll go through and, and check that out. Uh, I'll go through and we'll, we'll check that out. We'll take some questions from Twitter and, and we might take some questions from chat as well. Um, also, if you haven't already, uh, you should definitely go follow. Uh, you should definitely go follow Stay Safe TV. You should follow Tips Out Baby and, and you can follow our friend Joanna who joined us early on. Again, his, his power went out and uh, there was a tornado near his house, unfortunately. So uh, we don't have him here with us right now. Um, also, uh, something else that you guys can do is... Give me one second real quick. Uh, we are sponsored by Displate as well. We are sponsored by Displate. So uh, if you guys haven't already, you guys can check out Displate. Uh, is the command exclamation point Displate working? Sometimes it breaks and it doesn't work. Uh, but they're metal posters. Uh, I, I have some on there myself, but we are sponsored by Displate, and you guys can check that out as well. Um, let's see. Let me load this guy up right here. Uh, so, yeah, you guys can do this. Click. Everything's super scuffed right now, um, but yeah, you can you can check out Display right here. They do they do metal posters and all kinds of really cool stuff. So uh, you guys can check that out as well. There's also a, a link to Display down uh, in my bio below. Um, True. I'm, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick, and yeah, um, we'll, we'll, we'll take you, some questions wanna, soon. Let's transition to the questions. I'll start the first one. When you're gone, you can come okay. back and pick and up I'll, the I'll answer. I'll listen Angela on my phone. I've had, I've had way too okay. much water today, I'll tell you what. I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, well, hey, it's important to stay hydrated. It's very, very important, guys. Um, this is a question from Tuna Tornado on Twitter here. Um, do, and this is a good question. I actually don't know the answer. I'm sure Tips and S Fun might have an idea. And maybe even you guys that watched um, other streamers level from 30 to 40 on the beta two months ago. Do you guys think, Tuna Tornado, do you guys think the dungeon leveling groups will have enough gold for their mounts at 40? I'm actually not sure. Tips, what do you think about that? So we had this discussion. Um, I think if you, you're you going to be getting a lot of greens and a lot of blues during dungeons. Depending on your comp, you'll be opening up a lot of chests, a lot of the lock chests, etc. cetera. Um, I think you should be able to have enough gold. You just have to be smart about what you vendor, what you disenchant, and what you keep for the auction house. Um, but it's definitely going to be really, really tight. You should have enough. Also, you're going to have a lot of cloth, as some people are pointing out in the chat. It just depends on how smart you are about auction housing certain things and keeping certain things. Naturally, because you're spamming dungeons, you're going to get a lot of nice blue BOEs, which, which should be pretty nice. The higher up you go, you know, you get something like an executioner's cleaver to drop or something like that. You know, if you got, you're basically minted at that point. So I do think you'll have enough for your level 40 mount. Um, now, when it comes to your level 60 epic mount, Probably not. That's definitely going to require a lot oh. of extra grinding. Oh, yeah. Like, no one hits 60 with enough gold for the epic mount. Like, like if you're smart, you hit 60 with, like, 150, 200 G if you're just, if you're just playing. Like, no one yeah. hits 60 with 1,000 gold. But you're saying 40 is going to be tight really close. Now, the thing with the BOE is, that the first comes to my mind, if a lot of people are doing the dungeon grinding, the blue BOEs lose their value because there's so many more of them being pumped into the, into the world, right, through chests or, or dungeon BOE drops. So... I, I'm I'm not sure. Do you have any idea just how much like raw gold from vendors or just from copper silver you're picking up? Like, let because on on launch, this is my safe approach. On launch, when I'm thinking of gold, I don't want to have to rely on selling another player something because I don't know if it's going to buy. I don't I don't know if they're going to buy it. I don't know how much they're going to pay for it. I don't know if a certain item is going to have its value uh, tanked because of you know some meme like like i i would speculate blue dungeon boe's not going to be worth a ton because there's going to be so many people trying to farm dungeons um so I, I i like to use the word like economic proof gold farming methods right because th these are vendor or just gold you're picking up on your own or quest rewards you know you're getting the gold regardless of whether or not another player is buying or, or interacting with you right yeah that's a very good point but i will say in kind of the same in the same light because you're going to be dungeon grinding, mounts are no longer as, you know, as not desirable, but right. no longer as necessary. That, that is true. You're just going to yeah. be spamming the same dungeon over and over again in your 40s, especially in your 40s. Once you get to your mid 40s, once you get to BRD, you're basically doing BRD for like 
eight levels or something like that. And by that point, you know, each level is going to take you much longer. Mm -hmm. You're not going to need, you're not going to need mounts too, too often. Some people are saying ZF. So actually Zulfurak, believe it or not, some people tested this in last stress test. ZF might not be the way to go. Supposedly farming Mardon purple crystals is a lot better than uh, spamming ZF. So who knows if we'll be doing a lot of that, but in general, you won't be needing mounts as much if you're dungeon grinding for sure. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's certainly something to keep in mind is that based on how you're playing the game, you have different needs, and uh, uh, getting a mount as as soon as possible isn't quite as big of a deal whenever you're in dungeons because you're just you're not using your mount. Um, I think that I, I think that it's obviously nice, right? It's obviously nice, and and you are going to have situations where you're going to need to run back to town, you're going to need to go train, you're going to go need to vendor, you're going to go need to repair. Um, which is part of the reason why I, I personally like the idea of having a warlock in my in my dungeon grinding group. Uh, if, I, if I were to do a warlock in a spell cleave, I, I really like the idea of doing that because I think that having somebody that can basically you summon, you mage port, you summon, sorry, you summon, mage port, do your thing, and then port back or accept the summon. Like it's, it's like a whole thing. So uh, I, I think it'd be something that's really, really good. It's valuable for, for efficiently... Uh, reducing downtime in between your dungeons like every couple hours or so so oh yeah i mean i mean you talked about this earlier with me like if mm -hmm. if someone in the group if you have a mage and a warlock in your five-man dungeon cleave group if someone has to repair or someone has to go train skills or someone has to go do whatever you know let's say you lose someone you have to bring a new person to your group mage warlock combo bing bong bang you like it's so fast like that's that's the selling point of a warlock and a cleave group for me mm -hmm. otherwise you know you guys can disagree uh in chat i'm not sure i think a warlock is sort of just like a worse mage as far as dungeon groups go outside of the summoning thing which does save a lot of time no it, it mm -hmm. does save time well <laughs> it's also a lot like i mean even like mages at 60 right or sorry warlocks at 60 a, a lot of people and, and this is the thing it's, it's not all about meters it's a lot about you know it, it's it's there, there has a, there's a lot to say about like the utility and other things that you provide uh, as, as different classes and warlocks, I think are certainly like in that boat, especially in MC, right? Depending on, uh, let's take uh, let's take Gar for example, right? The, the banishes on Gar, and depending on what strategy you're you're, you're doing, um, warlocks are really really valuable for that, uh, particularly early on, or being able to banish the the elementals on the pulls uh, in MC, kill one thing at a time or whatever. So uh, there, I think there's certainly something to be said about utility and, and not just raw damage and meters and all that stuff. So. If anything, I would say, you know, the most tantalizing thing about a Warlock is just the ability to pull with Eye of Killrog, just mm -hmm. pull everything to you. That That's just, that's convenience in a nutshell, at least, you know, for a warrior, like just being able to draw everything, LOS everything with the eye and get everything to you is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think so too. I see uh, a new question here. Do you think clicks will form when the push to rank 14 happens? Vanilla had them. Will Classic have them as well? These have definitely happened on private servers. Let me tell you a story. The answer is yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Grinding up ranking is very, very political. Like I'll tell you, I have I have known guys that, you know, they're rank 12, they're rank 13. They've been with the same pre-made all the way up and they mess up and they accidentally let uh, a rogue cap the flag they're defending or they... They, they mess up in some way in their pre-made or, the, or they upset the pre-made leader in some way and they're kicked out of the pre-made and they're ranked 12 and a half or they're ranked 13 and they were trying to go to 14. And, uh, you know, th these are guys that are sleep deprived. They've been ranking for two and a half or three months at this point together. They're starting to rub on each other's nerves the wrong way. And suddenly you find yourself out of the pre-made because you made the up the wrong guy upset. And now you're done ranking because you, you're no longer in the good pre-made anymore. So dude, definitely ranking is, is very, very political thing <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and i mean you're, you're gonna have bracket leaders and stuff and that's just something to, to reiterate and we all know this is vanilla wow is a social game and and what you do matters right how how you interact with other people uh you, you have a reputation you have a name that means something and uh you know some some names mean mean like they're they're, they're mean more than other names right because somebody either has a, a really, really good reputation or even a really, really bad reputation and uh, how much it means could be a really bad thing for them, you know? Uh, so I think everybody kind of gets a chance to, to write their own story in Classic WoW and uh, it, it's a lot of, it's, it's very much based on who you're talking to, who you're interacting with, who you're playing with, uh, how you act in general, like you're, you're uh, just kind of the way you carry yourself. And it's a lot like real life in that respect. 
So I, I think absolutely there, there's going to be clicks. There's going to be brackets. There's going to be people running different groups. Uh, now I do think managing brackets in phase two is going to be incredibly difficult because there's no battlegrounds and it's all world PVP. But, um, but, but that's, that's like a whole nother point. Right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It is a very, very political competitive thing. If you're in a pre-made, there are several other people that want your spot. And, uh, you know, if, if your pre-made leader or bracket leader starts, you know, liking those people more than you, uh, you might find yourself out of the pre-made. It's, it's a very, it can be very frustrating. It's, there are definitely drama and politics involved. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm looking for more questions here. <laughs> I, I like this one, and this is something that, that would be good for us to talk about. But what, what's the future of ClassCast after launch? And, and that's something that we, we've talked about. Uh, I mean, we, we certainly slowed down on ClassicCast during the beta because we were all playing so much. But there was just so much to learn, so much to test, so much to, to play through that it really took up a lot of our time. The game is going to be the same way in some respect, but because it's not going to be finite, like we, we the game is going to keep, excuse me, the game is going to keep going. It's not going to be like, it's going to end at some date that we don't know. Um, there's going to be a little bit less of a rush. So more than likely what's going to happen with, uh, with ClassCast, we would like to do another episode before launch if possible. Uh, but also on top of that, uh, we'll probably take the first two weeks off of Classic Cast because we'll, we'll be managing guilds and, and doing our own thing and, and this and that, just trying to figure everything out. Uh, but I, I would expect us to come back with another Classic Cast um, probably, probably after, after two weeks, right? After two weeks or so, so maybe like week three or, or something like that. So uh, that's, that's probably what I would expect to do with... Uh, that's, what, that's, probably, that's what I would expect with Classic Cast is to do that and then get back on a more regular schedule after launch. So... Game yeah. permitting. I, I, I know. I know. For the first two weeks, especially S funds in the guild, tips out in a in a hardcore rating guild. I'm going to be leading my own hardcore guild. Mm -hmm. We're all playing on the same server. Fairlina PVP is a server we're all going to be on. Tips out's horde. S one and I alliance. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be very, you know, leveling fast, getting into molten core, farming prebis, doing all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. So once that's taken care of by the end of the two week mark, um, things are going to sort of mellow out a little bit. We'll find some time to do a class cast. I think that's how it's going to go. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And those of you who are playing on the same server as us, we know there's a lot of people who who uh, don't want to play on the same server. We know there's a lot of people who do want to play on the same server. Um, we've made a Fairlina server Discord and a Fairlina server Reddit. Uh, that the, the link is in the chat right now, exclamation point server. Uh, that if you guys want to be involved in the community, something like that. Here, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pull this guy up. Um, we need more horde people in the Discord. It's completely dominated by Alliance. The Reddit's dominated by Alliance. Let's get some horde representation, well, guys. Well, maybe, maybe if you guys would advertise it, maybe if you guys would actually advertise it. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, I've been talking you know about what this nonstop. It is? Dude, horde players, they're just not funny. They have no memes. They don't know how to have a good time. And uh, Reddit and the Discord, like, these are fun, happy places, and horde players just don't fit in. True, true. So, so here it is. This is the Fairlina PvP. Uh, <laughs> no, this, is, this is the Fairlina PvP uh, subreddit. You guys can go ahead and do this. There's we're at 2.1k members so far, which is pretty cool. Um, if you're looking for a guild, if you if you are starting your own guild and you're looking to recruit people, uh, if you wanna if you wanna make fun of the populations issues with Herod, for example, uh, this is certainly the place to do it. And uh, I think that uh, I think this is really going to be a, a good thing for our community and kind of fostering uh, fostering some pride in our server, right? And this is something that existed back in the day that uh, has has kind of died off. A lot of times people talk about faction pride, but when it comes to server pride, uh, when it comes to server pride, this is something else that totally existed as well. And um, yeah, that that subreddit is where all the memes, all the drama, mm -hmm. all the you know who did this, who did what. That's that's what this subreddit is for, Fairlina PvP subreddit. Right, and uh, and also we have the Discord as well, and there, I think there's something like there's like six thousand people in the Discord already too. So um, again, exclamation point server, and if you guys do want to play on the same server as us, like you guys should definitely go join that subreddit. You should uh, join that Discord server and uh, look for people, man. Make friends. We got like a really big mod team because we expect that there's going to be a lot of people posting in the Discord and stuff like that. And so we want it to be a good place uh, to kind of cultivate a strong community, right? Community events, fun stuff, a, a place where people can go and they can make new friends. Because uh, at the end of the day, I, I think that's how you have the best vanilla WoW experience that you can have is, is by finding the right people to play with and um, making the right kind of friends. 
So, yeah, that is the goal. Exclamation point server is what it is, or, or exclamation point fairly, you know, one or the other. Um, so, yeah, uh, there, there's that. That is a... Uh, that is kind of little little uh, little pitch for for our, our server and community. Um, I'm scanning for more questions here, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys, go hashtag Classicast on Twitter. Uh, you guys can at us at, at SFANTV, at Tips Out Baby at Stay Safe Warlock. Um, I see one here mm -hmm. uh, from Bot Vic. He says, "What's your opinion on dual multi boxing classic?" Okay, I hate hate multi-boxing with a passion i have no idea how that's allowed in game it should be considered an exploit it should be banned immediately i don't get it it's awful i think it ruins the game it's done so many bad things to retail wow it's going to be just as bad in classic wow i i just it's ah uh, it's disgusting it's was, disgusting what was it an issue back in the day i don't recall it being an issue i, I remember the the first time multi-boxing really became a thing was in uh was in arenas people would go five boomkin and it was it was very like it, it was it was not good it was like they could instigib somebody but it wasn't particularly good like it, it, i mean people could counter it if they knew what was going on i was i was going to say that's the first time i ever noticed it was five shamans in arena during tbc and uh the you, chain you just lightning gobbled, right yeah. yeah yeah um like i'm not a, i'm not a fan of it i don't like it I think that pretty much most people here, or a lot of people, are going to have a multi-box bank alt, but that's that's different than going around one-shotting people. It, you know, obviously having one character you're playing and another character as a bank alt you're logged into around around the clock, that's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But uh, like, I'm not a fan of it, and especially if people are using software to control, you know, 40 characters or even five characters at once. There's there's a difference in my mind between having four characters follow one character versus having software that's like a, a keystroke replicator to control multiple characters at once i don't like that somehow it's allowed well no i i know how it's allowed i know why it's allowed and i know why it's always been allowed it's because blizzard makes a ton of money from it like that's yeah. the obvious answer um i wish it wasn't is it going to change i don't think so it's always well, been allowed but even if you look at like private servers everybody's accounts were free and it wasn't an issue on private servers it's banned because yeah. they're free private servers won't oh, let you oh do okay it. i didn't even know it was banned yeah so never mind yep, that's, that's probably you. why you never saw it yep yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> that yeah, solves that it's, question. Uh, it, it's banned because they're not making money from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's banned because it's yeah, it's free. They can do infinite accounts and all that. Yeah, so I didn't even know that. Um, so there you go. But uh, here, here's another question. Uh, is it true that you can 10-man dungeons, like RFC and whatnot? Uh, this is from Winterly on Twitter, hashtag Classicast. Okay, so there has been some developments lately. Uh, everything was kind of set to five-mans on the Classic Beta, and a five-man cap on the classic beta. And people have found out after the fact that a lot of the early game dungeons, even after, I think it was 1.10 patch where they changed the caps uh, for the end game dungeons, a lot of the early game dungeons didn't change. So, um, like, for example, yeah, U UBRS was was 10-man. In, uh, in, it was 15, and then it changed to 10, for example, or, or BRS, I should say. Now, typically, a lot of people didn't really go into dungeons with more than five people because then they couldn't do their quests. Uh, unless it was a raid quest. If it's a specific raid quest in your quest log, then you can. Um, so I'm assuming they're going to fix it because, I mean, there's videos of people going in on Burning Crusade, 10 man into like dead mines. I saw a video of that and I saw a post on the forums about it. And I think, I mean, I think it's legit. I, I, I didn't even know because I had never even tried to do it. Um, you know, this so, is yeah. like a really, really interesting thing. You know, optimal dungeon cleave group size. What if, if you're dungeon cleaving, you want six people? What if you want four people? You know, it, why, why mm -hmm. is the best dungeon cleave number five people? I don't know. Like, I, I'm not, I'm personally not going to be dungeon cleaving, but I wonder if this is something that, you know, the dungeon cleave mega mind five heads have thought about. Do we want four people? Do we want six people? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You'd have to look at, you'd have to look at a lot and test it all out. So, so <laughs> I, I personally tested some stuff with like raid groups and XP split. And what I saw was that when I was in a raid group, the XP got split as if you were in a group of however many people actually hit the mobs. I didn't test it with healing. I did not test it with healing. If the healing counts as, as getting part of the XP split, I would assume yes. But, but we just went, like, we made a bunch of level ones, and we had five people in a group, then we had six people in a raid and seven people in a raid. And what we noticed is if we had two people in the raid hit the mobs, level one wolf, like, if you hit a level one, if you kill a level one wolf at level one, you get 50 XP. 
if you have two people kill it, you get 25 XP, no group bonus. Um, so what happened was we would have six people on a raid and then two people hit it to kill it and we both got 25 XP and nobody else got anything else. So I, I think that's that they do that to like pr prevent like a little bit of like uh, to, to prevent like exploitation of, of how like raid XP and stuff works. Uh, that's what I'm assuming. So I, I don't know. I think that more than likely just doing a five man group is probably going to be better, but there might be some kind of crazy situation where you can go in there with six people and it's really not that bad. I, I think the, uh, I think five people would have been the sweet spot anyway. Um, if I recall. Well, the question would be, let's say you're in a six man dungeon farming team. You'd have to have all six tag. Um, or like if the healer gets the tag from healing someone who's mm -hmm. tagged, what's the XP split? Like, that's the question with six. What's the split? Assuming they all tagged or seven, what's the split? Like, that's what it would come down to. And then is how, how, is you know there's going to be a reduction because you have more people presumably is it worth the xp reduction per person if you have you know such higher increased effective uptime or like you, that's why you just have to test all this stuff mm -hmm. yeah so i think it's going to be really interesting to see that that's something that, that pr probably are people going to people are going to play with i would assume after launch and just kind of see how it goes but uh, more than likely it's five is probably the sweet spot anyway um yeah do you have, do you have anything to add to that tips no, I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. He agrees. I mean, the other thing someone brings up is the lockout time. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I didn't even really do many dungeons on the beta. It's, so I, I'm assuming it's it's five lockouts per hour, right? That's what it should be. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is right I now? Mean, because I mean, we, early I, beta, I there, the there was no. I think so early beta, early beta, was beta 10, there was No, early beta, there wasn't one. Oh. And then I think they added five per hour or maybe 10. I'm not sure where they ended up having it be, but... Obviously, if you're grinding dungeons, you want to play around the cap, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you want to get as many runs per hour as possible, assuming they're good runs. So, it's fire per yeah. hour, yeah. Maybe maybe there's some, like, weird case where, like, if you're not hitting cap, maybe it's more valuable just to bring more people until you're hitting cap. And you go in there with six people or seven people. I don't well, know. If, if, if they're good Probably runs, not. Nick, they're, like, you really have to find yeah. the balance, right? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be really interesting to see. Uh, so, here's a... Uh, oh, it just bugged out on me. Oh, yeah. Here's a, here's a question. Um, I'm wondering how the Eye of Kill Rog, this is from Paint at Bronze. I'm wondering how the Eye of Kill Rog works for spell creep groups. Gloop, blah, blah, blah. I'm wondering how the Eye of Kill Rog worked for spell Kaleeb groups in the beta. Do the mobs aggro you after the eye dies, and how did the aggro range look like? So I I'm gonna be honest. I, I mean, I don't play a warlock. I was under the impression that, that you would have to pull it with a void walker because I thought Eye of Kill Rog wasn't going to pull all the mobs to you, but I, so I, I could be wrong. I'll tell you what happened early in the beta when I was level 30. So this is the first two or three weeks and I was farming Strathome or not, Str not Strathome, uh, uh, Scarlet Monastery mm -hmm. undead. So I would, and, and people were scouting for rares. What happened was I would occasionally ac accidentally pull or catch threat on a monster. Like he would, I'd get too close to monster. Um, they would like two or three shot the eye of Kilrog and then they would all run back and try to kill us. So okay. if, so you, you could use that to go out and pull a bunch of stuff and then it would leash everything back and pull it back to wherever you're standing. Now, I heard that they dropped the HP from Eye of Kilrog from, you know, a higher number to a much lower number. I, if it's one HP or not, I, I don't know. But uh, I, I was told it went from a thousand to one HP. But it's it would still work to pull a bunch of mobs if you just don't aggro anything. If you just don't get hit until you are at this until you can pull the monster you want, and then you and aggro intentionally, and mm -hmm. then you pull everything back, right? Okay. Like, like the HP really of the Isle of Kirog does not functionally matter a lot because it's pretty easy to dodge stuff to get to the point you want, and then you egg, uh, you egg everything, and then they all run back. Okay. Um, so, so I mean, I, I think more than likely you're probably going to end up using a Void Walker. Then some people are saying that that the eye was was changed during the course of the beta too. Um, so yeah. Well, so if if there was a change that made it so if, if yeah. they attack the Isle of Kirog and the Isle of Kirog dies they just reset and don't run back and try to kill you, the warlock or your group, mm -hmm. then it's worthless, right? Then right. then that approach is worthless. I don't know if they did that. I, I didn't test it at the end of the beta. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm unsure as well. But I, for me, I always used Voidwalker whenever we had a warlock in our group. Um, so he could sack himself too and the Voidwalker survives a little bit longer. But, um, but yeah, so uh, how it works is essentially you would have your warlock send his pet out and whenever the warlock sends his pet out, it puts two people on the threat table. It puts the pet, and then it puts the warlock, and, and nobody else, right? Uh, now, if 
the pet dies, it goes to the next person on the threat table. And for me as a paladin, let's say I'm a prop paladin tank and I'm, I'm AOE tanking and stuff like that. Then what I would do is I would heal the warlock. And if I heal the warlock, then it puts me on the threat table uh, as well. Like let's say the warlock mana taps even. He mana taps or life taps, whatever it's called. Uh, and, and he would lose some health. I heal him and then I get threat over the, the warlock and then they all come to me and then I, I just start my tanking, right? Uh, so that's the way that I approach it in a in a situation where, where we had a paladin tank. Um, so yeah, did did you try that at all with with horde, on horde side tips? The no, warlock? we didn't use we didn't we didn't try warlocks. Um, I just remember seeing people do it a lot in the beginning of beta, but uh, in the very end, I mean, I was under the impression that regardless of what the HP of I have Kilrog was, so long as you pull like stays instead of the mob you want and it pulls everything else, it should be fine. Yeah, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't tested it, to be honest. Or, so if, if people are, and this was my experience, this might be what you're thinking of tips. If people saw streamers using I have Kilrog early beta, um, it's because they were scouting for rares in dungeons like uh, Scarlet Monastery Undead and not because they were trying to pull monsters to AoE farm. It, they, they were only doing rare scouting at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think it'll be, I, I think, I think warlocks are going to be fine in like a spell cleave situation. Um, like Stacey said earlier, they're, they're just like less damaged mages, but I think they add a lot of utility that could be helpful too. Um, this is a good question. This is from, uh, Lucas. He says, will the quest lines that were added later down the line in the, in original vanilla, like Searing, Searing Gorge and Silithus be available on launch? Uh, yes and no. As far as I know, I think the Searing Gorge quests and stuff are going to be in from the beginning. But the Silithus, like Scenarian Circle stuff, uh, that is going to be added in Phase 5 with AQ40. That, I, I'm, I'm under the impression that that is the way they're going to treat it. Um, we actually asked them about it, Stay Safe. We actually asked them about it whenever we were at that Media Summit thing. And uh, they were open to kind of like see what they wanted to do with Searing Gorge, but... I got the vibe that they were leaning towards uh, having everything in there. Um, well, people could check, right, if they hit 45. I leveled 1 to 35, not 40 to 45 the other mm -hmm. day. Um, what was there at 45? Because the quest would have been there at that point. I, I mean, I, I didn't check at 45. I, I got I got to 44. Oh, okay. I was, like, testing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Searing Gorge and Hinterlands was there at 45. Okay, I guess it's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that was kind of the, the impression that I got. Uh, let's take some questions out of uh, let's take some questions out of chat as well here before before we wrap up. Um, <clears throat> Jamal, what is overall WoW viewership on Twitch going to look like for launch, and how long do you think it'll be the top game? Uh, I, I think there's going to be a couple things, right? Like I think that people are obviously very excited for Classic WoW for a number of reasons. One reason is that if you look at a lot of people, a lot of gamers, a lot of them kind of got their start in online gaming with WoW. Like whether it was in Vanilla or Burning Crusade or even Wrath, uh, WoW was a, a very like integral part of people's like online gaming uh, history, careers, whatever you want to call it. And um, whether that's streamers, whether that's just anybody in general, uh, I think it's a game that really made a big impact on a lot of people. So I think that it's going to be really, really popular. Uh, not not necessarily just on Twitch, but I think as far as the game, right? There's a lot of people who who don't watch Twitch and play games, right? Uh, there's a lot of people who don't watch YouTube and play games. There's a lot of people who who they just kind of do their own thing and they're not worried about anything else. But uh, I, I think it's going to be popular. I think it's going to be a big success for um, both from a gameplay perspective and, and I think on Twitch it's going to be pretty popular too because you have so many really really big streamers. Like a lot of the biggest streamers on the website come from WoW, um, and and you know they have history in WoW. Like whether it's guys like Shroud or Tim the Tatman or Lyric. Um, Summit, of course, uh, whether it's those kind of guys or people who they, they like were wow guys like, like soda, for example, and he's kind of mo moved on to variety and he's been really big on classic for the last probably three or four years. It, he's, he's been pushing for like legacy servers and stuff too, pretty publicly. Um, so I, I think just by the nature of, uh, the viewership that those guys have added into the section, I think that, yeah, I think it's going to be really, really popular on uh, on twitch for for a good while and and of course there's going to be a drop off right anything with this kind of uh hype behind it and and that stuff like you have the hype beast kids come in and then naturally it'll it'll taper off a little bit but i think people playing the game which is the important thing people playing the game uh are going to fall in love with it and they're really going to enjoy it so that's that's what I, that's how i feel 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that there will be a lot of tourist gamers. I mean, it's super easy to get into Classic WoW to ride on the Battle Net launcher. All you need is a sub. I think there will be a lot of people that come back that haven't played it since vanilla, that have never played a private server, people that have never played it before ever. Maybe people that started playing WoW later, you know, in Mob or Cat or whatever, or just people that have never played WoW that are here for the hype. Um, you know, some, who knows, probably not the majority of those people. Uh, probably a minority will stick around and actually enjoy the game. But still, I think Classic WoW is going to be very, very successful. We saw during uh, the first couple weeks, like consistently for probably three or four weeks, Classic WoW was like a top three game almost around the clock on Twitch. Very, very successful on Twitch. I think it's, I think it's a fun game to watch. I think it's a fun game to mm -hmm. play. Um, really because it's so community oriented. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, think, I think that once people get invested in, you know, like... As far as Twitch goes, I think once people get invested in what goes on on the on the streamer server, you know, the drama of the streamer server or which guild did this or who got that, I think people will like it'll be almost sort of like a soap opera. Like, it, dude, it's what, almost like what's reality going TV. On? Yeah, like, yeah. like I agree. Somebody they, they might watch Jersey Shore, but they're like, I sure as hell don't want to live in that house. You know what I mean? And, and there's there's going to be a yeah. lot of people like that where they're yeah. like, I don't want to play on that server, but I, I kind of want to watch the train wreck. You know, yeah. Well, um, well, that's what the beta was like. That's mm -hmm. exactly how the beta went every, down. Every time, every time, two streamers or three streamers went head to head during the beta, views would skyrocket. Um, whenever you know, stay safe. You would go, you know, head to head against somebody on the horde side, or whenever there was a Gurubashi Arena contest, or when Asm was getting his Roland Axe, everyone's views skyrocketed because people want to see who's going to come out on top, who's going to take the win, who's going to take the L. I, I yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting, and and this is something that. Uh, even even for like non-streamers, right? Even a situation where like people aren't streaming, like people are very in invested into the progression of what other people are doing. Like, for example, when we were playing on Lightbringer, Elysium Lightbringer, stay safe. Like, people were always talking about like, oh, what's what's progress doing? What's demise doing? What's praise doing before they merged? Uh, what's going on with Grizzly? What's going on with this guild, that guild? There, there was always something happening, and people were very like invested, it, almost in a weird way of knowing like who got what items. You know, um, well, I'll even if they you, weren't streamers, I, I've heard this like personally from people in chat, you know, hey, stay safe. I'm in a point in my life where I can't like I'm going to play classic WoW, but I can't play a ton. I have a wife. I have kids. I have a job or whatever, 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 um, you know, but I, I, I want to follow your journey. I want to follow, you know, S1's journey your tips out journey and sort of like be taken along for the ride because I can't play that much. I can't play at that level. I can't invest so much time, but I want to follow you through it. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think it's going to be really fun. And I think, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of long-term investment. Like, I, I think that, I, I think that the thought that like, oh, classic will die after like a month or two is, is kind of absurd, right? Like, I think that if you have one layer, one layer is about the size of an original vanilla WoW server, which is like 2,500 to 3,000 people, right? Somewhere in there. And if your server has one layer worth of people, and let's say you're in phase two, they get rid of layering, that is totally fine. I, I do think they're going to increase the server cap uh, over what the original server cap was. We don't we don't know. They haven't really talked about that yet, but I would I would assume that they're going to do that. Um, but with that being said, uh, I think that the, the game is certainly not going to die. I mean, there's so few servers. There's so many people with pre-name registrations alone and i i bet half the people who are going to play classic have not registered their names i mean i i think if if you told me if you told me a third of the people who are going to play classic have registered their names i would be shocked that that number would be very high to me that's what i think and, and i still think they should probably open more servers up not even i'd say even like less than a tenth less than a tenth of the people that will play classic have reserved their names less than a 50th because yeah. you got to consider how many people have like how many people just, they're going about their day, they don't even tune into Twitch, they just know that Classic is out. Very, very few people reserve their names, I guarantee that, relative to the overall population. Well, you're right, and I know you're right because every day after the name reservation day, however many days ago that was, we've seen you know mm -hmm. all these servers go from low to medium to high to full. Like We've seen all of these metrics increase mm -hmm. as people are like, oh, I can reserve a name, I'll reserve a name, right? Mm -hmm. So they're so just filling up. Wasn't there a blue post that said a, a medium population server is kind of like the break point for, okay, this is higher than like a typical server pop from back in the day? I, I believe I saw a blue post about that. I, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. That, 
They said a medium population server today is bigger, far bigger than a full population server back in vanilla. Mm -hmm. So the fullest servers like Illidan and BlackRock and those servers, mm -hmm. a full population or a medium population server today is bigger than. Yeah. So so I, I'm really curious to see how they're going to approach the situation. I, I would be on the lookout for more servers to open up, uh, particularly on EU. I mean, I, I thought I thought for sure they should have at least I mean, if they started with two, they should have four at least uh english pvp servers and and i think they should probably end up adding another english pvp or uh, na pvp server as well um i'd uh yeah i'd, I'd be i'd be really surprised if they didn't so uh, and, and you know that that was probably a big reason why they even did the pre-name registration was for them to get a gauge on how many people are probably going to play the game on launch i think there that number is going to go way up from what the the, the pre-registration is but um, but, but I do think it, it helps them out a lot. Like as far as like their data and research and kind of seeing what to expect, they definitely, they definitely do not want to make too many servers and do server merges. That's a, that's a huge issue. That's a huge can of worms. We saw it with Zeth core whenever we were playing on lights hope or, uh, it was Elysium at the time. Um, we were, we saw, we saw it with Zeth core. They opened up Zeth core because there was too many people on, on early Elysium and then, Zeth Core happened. Zeth Core had a decent population. It dropped the Elysium population a little bit. But then after a few months, I, I don't know how many months in it was, maybe like, I, I don't remember how long in it was. But after a certain amount of time, Zeth Core ended up dying. They ended up merging Zeth Core back into the original server. What ends up happening is, is those guilds, those communities, those people, people have to get new names. People, like, it completely shatters the community of the server that they had before. So you would see the same thing with server merges and retail. And a lot of people will just think like, Oh, merge, no big deal. But I think a merge for a game that's so community driven and so based around like the social, uh, social aspects of, of MMOs. Uh, I think that a server merge can be really, really devastating to an existing community. And, and I would say anybody who played on Zeth core probably would, uh, would, would agree with that. Um, or, or at least have some good insight on that too. So, I got a follow-up question to that. What do you guys think? Wh where do you think WoW is bigger or biggest? EU, NA, or let's say China, Eastern, Eastern Asia? Where do you think it? Where do you think WoW is the most popular out of those three? I think uh, probably EU. I would say EU, as far as vanilla goes. I, I would say I would say EU. I mean, but that that's also private servers were based in Europe, so so there was more Europeans playing on private servers in general. I mean, let's let's say a, the, the, an equal portion of the population of these regions are interested in classic WoW. There's two times as many people in Europe. Like, there's just going to be more people that are interested in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just in general, you're right. That's a good point. I don't I don't know the maths, but but I mean, yeah, you're you're probably right. Um, but do we do it based on people or based on weight? Because you know, NA. Yeah. Got that yeah. Right? Any gamers are worth four EU gamers. That's true. So that's that's true. true. Now, do you think we could take that weight and distribute it equally and then move to China? True. Good point. We could Good all server transfer actually. to Chinese servers, distribute yeah. the weight equally. I think it would work. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, there's a, there's a whole lot of stuff that, that we can take a look at and see how this pans out. But... Um, but yeah, I, I think it'll be really good. Let's take a couple more questions here and uh, let's see if there's anything on Twitter or any questions from chat. Um, mm, 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 mm. How do you think the increased population is going to affect server economy? This is a good question, Hurley. So I, I think a lot of people keep talking about this, but if it, it's essentially, it essentially works in a lot of the same ways that dynamic respawns went uh, in private servers, except it's just happening in chunks, right? So they have a layer. This is this is a layer of Azeroth. 3,000 people-ish, right, ish. And then you take that, and there's nodes, there's this, there's that for those 3,000 people. Then you have another layer for another 3,000 people. So it just happens in blocks. I don't think it's going to be an, a big issue economically uh, as much as some people have made it out to be. I think because everything is going to scale, right? The more players there are, the more layers there are. The more layers there are, the more nodes there are, the more resources there are. And then it's just supply and demand at that point, right? Well, he, it, uh, uh, here's the thing. I'll tell you this. There's the auction house is shared. Point, yes, the auction house is shared. Auction house is shared between layers. There's going to yeah. be the top 0.01% of players that level very, very fast. These are your top players in the, in the top guilds. They get to 60 before everyone else. 
these people are going to be hopping between layers, manipulating layers, farming Black Lotus, farming Devil Sword. Mm -hmm. These people are going to farm so many resources within seven days or two weeks that they have these these uh, these high level zones to themselves. Essentially, um, these people will be able to farm so much gold that they'll never have to farm gold ever again for the next two years. And on top of that, very likely would be able to fuck up um, certain aspects of the economy as well permanently for two years with Devil Sword or Black Lotus or in complete market control. Like that's my concern. I think I think that's the biggest problem with layering is the economic implications that happen in the first seven days to two weeks. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I, I think with Devil Sword specifically, though, when you think about it, let's say there's ten layers on our server. That means there's what sixty, seventy Devil Sword. Um, how do you control ten layers? Like, how, how do you control, not just control 10 layers, you have to control them 24 hours a day because the second any spawn slip through, you can no longer corner the market. If anything, I think Devil Sword is going to be way cheaper in Classic. I, 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 think, it too. I, I think I think I think Devil Sword is going to be cheaper just because it's going to be harder to to manage everything. Another I thing mean, to keep here, in mind. Here's, here's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. If you make, an, if, if you farm enough Devil Sword in the first week when there's zero contest, You've made enough gold to buy out. Let, let's say you lose control. You have half control for the subsequent month or so, right? Um, you only have 12-hour control across all the layers. It's hard to coordinate. You can't keep total economic lockdown on, on the crater or whatever other resource you're trying to farm. You can buy out low-priced low leather and repost it. Like That's how you achieve economic control because you've already made enough money to do that. You just flip it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, if you if you go in and you, you kind of like farm everything up early on, I mean, it's 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 going to be more valuable earlier too. I mean, the the longer it goes on, the more chance more people have to get involved. And I think when it comes to just having so many spawns and so many people, I think it's going to be harder to corner that market. But that being said, because there's so many more people playing, the demand is going to be a lot higher. So like, let's say let's say you have like a Boe Blue or Epic or whatever that drops too. Like, you might see, let's say there's a Twig of the World Tree. You might like you maybe would have seen like one or two twig of the world tree on the auction house at a time back in the day at most or whatever. And then at, at, in, in the same respect, you, you might end up seeing like eight, nine, 10 of them now, but there's so many more people playing that the demand kind of stays the same. That's the way that I so, see it. But let's say there was a group of 10 people and they were dedicated to setting up a twig of the world tree mafia. Okay. They would on their own farm twig of the world trees and also buy up every single twig of the world tree they saw in the auction house and real estate at their, at their price. Yeah. And right, that's, that's, a, that's the problem. Well, well, that's typical. That's typical like auction house. That's people gaming the auction house. Like it's like has always happened. And if you can't like, I, I think if you aren't able to actually buy everything out, then you're eventually going to get undercut by someone and then it's going to snowball. Right. Like you, you literally well, have to have control of like every single piece of, of like Devil Sword, for example. You know what I mean? Because I've tried to do that too, but I've tried to do that with not enough gold to like create a monopoly. And then I just end up wasting a bunch of gold on stuff and I end up having to undercut the people who undercut me and then I lost a bunch of gold. So, so. The, the idea is that Devil Sword is a much smaller, like it's, uh, there's only one place to get it. Yeah, mm -hmm. there might be seven or eight or nine layers, but uh, if, you, if you can coordinate and lock that down for a couple of days, like seriously, like you, you can you can control it, it for, for up, weeks yeah. afterwards. Yeah, it, it might end up working that way, and it just snowballs. Um, I, I mean, you might be you might be right about that. I just think it's gonna be so hard to get like around the clock, like yeah, and not having will. anybody being able to contest them, especially since it's not international servers like there were before uh, on private servers. I said before, like there were on private servers. It's it's a different thing. So um, so yeah, uh, and also, how do you know you're on all the layers? That's another good point because you never know how many layers there are active at a time. There might be another yeah. layer that you don't know about. And what a lot of people don't know is that layers aren't just generated on a population basis. It's not like, you know, okay, 2,000 people generate next layer, you know, 4,000 people generate next layer. That's part of the equation, but the layering technology is understood it. You can also spin up new layers or layers, new layers will also spin up based on a variety of other circumstances that haven't been disclosed by Blizzard. And I think it has to do with bugs and, and, you know, if like a server, like something on a server crashes internally or something like that, it can spin up a new layer, which is why a lot of people found themselves layer hopping without choice during mm -hmm. even the late stages of the beta. Like there's, there's some weird layering Illuminati going on behind the scenes. So there might be 20 layers. There might be 30 layers. Who knows? You know, like if we're talking like a 20,000 pop server at launch, you might have like 30 layers. We don't know. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, I think it's I, I think it's going to be really really interesting, and there's going to be a whole lot of unknowns. Uh, let's do this. Let's take one last question before we call it a day, guys. Uh, also, if you haven't already, please, please, please follow Stay Safe TV, follow Tips Out Baby, follow our friend Joanna who who joined us early on. Unfortunately, a, a tornado came through his area and it, and it cut out his power and everything. So uh, everything's fine with him. We got an update from him. He's he's fine. But um, but yeah, that's that's why Joanna couldn't join us for uh, for for the rest of the show. So so make sure to go follow Joanna as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he got he, he got put in a different layer. So, um, yeah, I mean that's another thing we were talking about, like the the concerns about you know him on release. Like, I mean, if his if his internet and stuff isn't sorted out, then uh, who or his power and all that stuff? Because who knows how much damage the tornado did? Uh, his house is fine, but like in general in the area, like you don't know. Um, so yeah, D do we know if the layers have their own auction house or all the auction houses linked? Layering it only affects the people that you see in the world around you but as far as auction house as far as chat as far as all this other stuff it is it is wide open like er everybody else is like playing on the same server um layering is essentially like like uh like a dynamic it's almost like they're like dynamic server clusters that are like constantly merging and unmerging but the difference is, is that all the names are linked all the auction houses are linked all the uh, or not all the auction houses, but there's one auction house. All the names are the same. There's uh, chat channels are all linked together. It's it's all one big chat channel. So from that respect, you're not really like you're not really fracturing the economy or or taking people out of the the game in that regard. It's only just basically to, to like handle lag and stuff going on in the world directly around you, kind of. So uh, you read general chat is layered. Do you have you guys heard that general chat is layered? I heard that it was not. Um, I don't think so. I was under the impression, I was under the impression that everything was, um, uh, that, that everything was together. That. Wait, if general chat's layered, then how are you going to get invited to the admin layer? Because you can't, if you're spamming a general chat to get invited to the admin <laughs> layer, who's going to invite you? Yeah. Right? Yeah, you never know. Oh, no, dude. I, I was under the impression that the chats are not layered, unless they changed it. Dude, I'm so happy I'm not Alliance, dude. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> I'm so happy. Are cities exempt from layering? Uh, no, and this is something else. Okay, let, let's talk about this real quick before I finish. Um, do you... I kind of wish that cities were on their own layer because I don't think it works this way. But cities were on their own layer and if you are in that city, you are in that city and you see everybody else who's in town. Like whether it's Stormwind, Ironforge, Ogremar, Undercity, whatever it is, you see everybody in town. But the issue is, is let's say you have a raid coming into your city. Your your entire raid goes into that city's layer, like on a, like in a city raid situation. Um, and then like you don't see them. And then all of a sudden, like let's say you're in the tunnel, Ironforge, you got the statues, all this stuff. And then you're just sitting out here minding your own business. Like, you would be watching some people duel and stuff outside, then all of a sudden you see about, like, 200 Torrin rushing in at you, you know? And here's the thing. I think that is such a... Like, city raids don't happen, like, every day, right? But you are in the capital cities every day. From my perspective, if well, I had to choose between the two, I would rather have the cities be on their own layer so that if you're in town, you're in town and you can see everybody. That's how I feel. The here's the big thing. I don't even think with current with the way layering works right now they can do that because I remember we 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 asked them hey what if you only layered the one to twenty zones or the one to thirty zones and then everything above thirty or everything above twenty was not layered and it was free for all you could see everyone and they were like no with the way layering works it has to be all or nothing it's the entire continent or it's not or it's or it's not the entire continent so I don't even think they can take an area or a zone or a city or whatever and just pick it out of the layer thing and make its own deal. I don't even think they can do that. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, I don't know if that's that's something that they can't do at all or if that's just not how it works right now though. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying in an ideal situation and not everything's ideal, that's just what I would hope that they could do is, is that they could have the cities on their own layers so that everybody's in town at the same time. I think it would be cool, but then of course you have, like you said, the, the, the city raid thing, but uh, yeah. But I, I think like if you weigh yeah. the pros and cons, I mean, who knows, right? Who knows um, how, how it would actually be approached? What do you think, Tips? 
I think uh, I think at the end of the day, when it comes to layering, I think uh, it's such a, it's such a hard question to answer because we don't know how layering works hundred percent. I think at the end of the, like what Stay Safe said, like you know whether layers can be you know certain zones can be layered. I, I don't know. I, I don't I don't have enough information to give like a clear answer to be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah. So I mean, like th this is my understanding of it. If you have certain zones that are layered, you just have shards again. Because the way sharding works in Retail WoW and how it has worked for several expansions, you might have an Elwyn Forest shard and a Duskwood shard and a Red Ridge Mountain shard. And as you travel between them, the things behind you disappear and the things in front of you reappear as you uh, or, or up here as you hop between the zones. And if, if there's too many people in one zone, in Elwyn Forest, for example, you might have a Goldshire shard. Mm -hmm. You might have a, uh, a Fargo Deep Mine shard. And you might have a hogger area shard. And as you travel between those smaller zones inside of Elwyn Forest, you're seeing things reappear and disappear. So the second you start having like, like, like a zone wide layer or a town wide layer, you, you whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. you're just back to sharding. Like that's just a shard again, right? Mm, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's, it, man, it, it's, it's really annoying. And I, I think at this point, like whatever we saw in the beta is probably what it's going to be. So uh, I just hope it turns out for the best and it doesn't really take away from the game. So yeah, the, yeah. the, the overall, the, the, the net result of the equation of everything else that's put into this thing is uh, overall positive. So that's, that's, uh, that, that's what the goal would be, I guess. That's what the hope would be. Well, I mean, like with this recent blue post yesterday or two mm -hmm. days ago, whatever it was, they once again, they said, hey, it's something we're only doing the first couple of weeks to deal mm -hmm. with launch. It's only launch. It's for launch dates to help with launch, et cetera. So they said that multiple times. And also they said, we're getting rid of layering before, before phase two, they said that again. So they're, they, they haven't backed down on that. They reaffirmed it. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it, at, at, at least the message they're putting out is that they want to get rid of it ASAP. That's mm -hmm. my impression. Will that actually happen? Will they get rid of it ASAP? I don't know, but they've said it multiple times. I guess we just sort of have to take their word for it and uh, cross our fingers and hopes hope mm -hmm. hope it uh, it's gone soon. Mm -hmm. And we will uh, we'll start to find out how all this stuff is going to roll here in uh, just under eight days. Uh, by the time this is posted on YouTube, about seven days. So it's going to be really really exciting to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us for Classic Cast. Joanna was with us for a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't stay. We would love to have Joanna on another time and, and get the, a chance to talk with him some more. Uh, he's, he's a really, really great guy. Make sure you guys go follow Joanna. Uh, also, make sure to follow Stay Safe TV. Tips out, baby. Uh, check out their YouTube channels as well. This is going to be posted on YouTube, just like all the classic casts and everything else going on on YouTube. Uh, also, uh, for myself, for my own front, I'm, I'm looking at uh, having somebody else manage my YouTube channel here for Classic Launch so that I can get more YouTube content and stuff. Uh, out to you guys and uh, trying to get all that stuff sorted out. So those of you guys watching on YouTube, uh, you guys have something to look forward to, a lot more consistent content from me. Hopefully, if everything works out, uh, come classic launch. So um, and that's youtube.com slash sfantv, uh, YouTube tips out baby, and YouTube stay safe TV. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us. I will continue the stream. Uh, I will be playing Dauntless today, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Yeah, thanks, chat. Take it easy, boys. See you either on Classic Cast before launch or uh, we'll see you in game. Seven days, let's go!